You're not supposed to laugh during the intro. <laughs> Mason, no. That's. <laughs> I was seeing my friend's, like, really serious selfie on Twitter. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, one way to do the Hi, intro. everyone. Welcome okay. to the podcast. Yes. Uh, hey, we're on, like, was it six, seven? Oh, was that, seven. Was, that was really loud. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I sorry. turned on my volume for that laugh. Yeah. Right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode seven of the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose okay, yeah. slash Seth Rukage. Today, I am, we are joined by Sarah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I didn't Corey. think of anything interesting. Hola. Our, our, our resident uh, Celtic guardian over here. Stop. Uh, <laughs> Stronger than titanium. Our tech wizard, Mesa. I mean, was, all right, I'll take it. Sure. I was, uh, I was bestowed to anything. Our unofficial fifth, fifth member, Blaine, who has been on three episodes now? Three I or want four? I a petition to call this episode, since it's episode seven, like a dragon. Uh, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of that. <laughs> and we're also joined by a uh, Nexus longtime hey, fan and up, now guess it on you. All right, oh we have God. a hell of a freaking panel. This is going to be a big, fat, nice and chunky, beautiful boy of an episode. Chunky. It's, like, it's just... <laughs> just like the PS5. Oh my god, it's so chonky. It's really cool. Uh, how about it. this? Yeah, Series it's much too big to be called a console. Monolith. All right, at the top of the show, yeah. I just want to go to remind, remind everyone to every single time. Uh, like, comment, subscribe on all the socials. That includes YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Uh, following us on all those helps us exponentially, and we will love you if you do so. We still love you either way, but we'll extra love you. No, all right. sorry. Uh, I'm not going to extra love you. That, yeah, you I can't. Uh, sorry. No extra love? Mm. I mean, I gotta I'll keep extra love. love them. I have. A, I gotta I have keep my love extra love for me right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's just dive straight into it with uh, next gen. This is going to be everything, including the consoles, the games, our experiences, yeah. whether we've gotten it or not. So l- let's start off with that. Uh, who was able to grab a next generation console? Sarah, do you want to go first? I was. Uh, so I was able. Like, I physically have an Xbox Series X. Like, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> Um, it's very heavy. It's mm-hmm. a monolith. It is, uh, I've really only had a chance to play Tetris Effect, uh, Devil May Cry 5 Special Ed- Edition, and Gears Tactics. Oh, and Gears 4. Basically all the gears on it. Um, the, the, like, the, the like, multiple games running at once feature is kind of awesome. Uh, I just want to throw that out there. I used it because I'm playing Gears, Gears Tactics, and I've been playing other stuff. It's really, it's really great. It works surprisingly well. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> How's oh your god, uh, how's your trying to get a PS5 situation? Oh going? my god, please no. So I mean, <laughs> very long story short, Walmart's been fucking me over. Uh, for those who pre-ordered from Walmart, uh, they oversold from their September 12th pre-order date, and so uh, mine isn't shipping out it until today if it ships out at midnight or like the beginning of next week. So at this point, I am exhausted, tired. I'm just going to wait for it to go on sale at like Amazon or Best Buy again. I'm just going to pick it up because I'm fucking exhausted. I, I, I have I, a PlayStation game and I can't even play it. So I want to say there's some irony in both Mesa and I not being able yep. to lock down a pre-order. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yet Mesa and I are the first ones to actually get ours. I was so. <laughs> livid, <laughs> but I was also stoked for you guys. The yeah, pre- I was, was a, for you guys. It was a pre-order was a, game. <laughs> It was a joyous fury, is what I was feeling. Yeah. <laughs> I, te- I, I technically got one a little bit earlier, so I got yeah, one day, of, that's true. Like day of. I think like I got like six hours earlier than I was supposed to, too, which is pretty exciting. Cor- Corey was uh, furiously happy, like I'm happy for you guys. <laughs> yeah, no, that was basically me because it's like <laughs> because when God. you guys when you guys got one, uh, was that was that Friday? morning that you got yes. it yes okay so when you guys got one um thursday uh my boyfriend had told me that ours had gotten delayed by like a day or whatever and like i usually am not super anxious about like game stuff uh, or anything because like since i became an adult i'm just like all right whatever it'll get here when it gets here but for some weird reason this this console launch had me so freaking anxious that I I literally was up on Friday at six in the morning and I couldn't get back to sleep. 
and my my PlayStation didn't arrive until like five in the afternoon. I think that's gen- that's generally how I am with hype. Like, uh, what was yeah. the last thing I was like before this? I think the thing I was excited for was uh, the last Star Wars movie, and I don't want to get into mm. my thoughts on that. that's a oh, whole yeah. other fucking show. Yeah, but oh, um, yeah. We can talk but about just how disappointing that was. Some exactly, other. but uh, just like the hype, nev- the hype never hits me until. Like, it's right around the corner. Like, yeah, it's six months I mean, out, I'm just like, say, whatever. Yeah. I will say, on Tuesday, I was, like, I got tackled the USB. I walked the building. I was like, do you have a really big package for, like, enter my apartment number here? And he's like, yeah, I have more packages in the back. Can you give me, like, five minutes? And I, like, smushed my face against the front glass of my, of my fucking uh, uh, apartment building. And I was just like, where is it? And then I see him, like, walking with this giant box. And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's here. Like I, yeah, I would hundred percent believe that. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get, I'll get some time. Or like, I don't usually get too excited until like the day before. So like Demon Souls, I was really excited when it got announced, and then I kind of forgot about it a little bit. And then it's the day before, and I was like, damn, I'm gonna play a Demon Souls remake tomorrow. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. I got so Nexus, how did you manage to uh, to grab your pre order? So I got. <laughs> very very lucky and the day that they went live i like randomly saw i think it was an amazon link while i was at work even and i like immediately pre-ordered it and i was like ah should i get the disc version or not i just immediately got the disc version uh and then i just secured it i had literally no problems got here on time uh, how how fast were you trying to get it into your uh, like card or anything were you like on Uh, it like the minute it happened or i was on it i was like refreshing uh, like when I knew that the pre-orders were going up and I saw Warrior 64 I posted that the Amazon had some, so I just like kind of rushed on it. Yeah, that was how I got my Walmart one. Uh, a really good friend of mine had messaged me the link, literally said nothing but the link, and he's like, they're up now, get it. And I was in the middle of like getting my hair cut. I was just like, ah, just like, quickly going on my phone. I, I do not believe, I don't believe that Warrior 64 is a human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's some kind of bot, or at least he's five feet. <laughs> something like that <laughs> he's a or, he's like he's like fucking five five kids in like a really big trench that's coat. exactly yeah. where i was going <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes i'm here i am i am i'm here to buy some alcohol sir <laughs> some alcohols <laughs> I, I smoke the marijuana i inject it right into my bloodstream guys <laughs> yeah. blaine how, did you manage to grab a pre-order or buy a ps4 not P- um, fuck I'm, PS5. I'm a, I'm gonna be real. Um, I have almost nothing to add because I did not. And I've actually been balancing the two. I've been like disassociating on and off since this conversation started. So nice. Sorry. Oh, what what are your thoughts on trying to grab one? Like, do you have a general plan for um, it? I'm probably going to wait until I can clear off some credit on my Micro Center card, or that's more than fair. Yeah. yeah, just something where oh, I can get it. Oh, responsibility? Ew. 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 I mean, it's that, or I'm going to end up taking the money out of my pension again and just <laughs> and just getting uh, two systems. I mean, on one hand, res- financial responsibility. On the other hand, PlayStation and Miles Xbox. Morales. Exactly. Just remember, kids, uh, when you're an adult... Next. Just remember, kids, when you're an adult, you can you can buy whatever you want, but you also have crippling depression. We'll see. And you also buy random shit like this. Yeah, that's worth it. What is that? It's a shrimp. Oh, it is a little shrimp. Oh, it's a shrimp. I thought it was a shark. The shrimp. I know it's uh, a bug snack. (laughs) We will. We will get to that. I haven't started bug snacks bug yet. Sucks. That's the title of tonight's episode. We will cool. get to that. <laughs> <laughs> I really is, but I have time. Um, Mason and I's story is pretty similar in terms oh, yeah, of we like, wait a week get, for this damn what do you mean similar? It, it's exactly the same. So yeah, we, okay. we, Mason and I did <laughs> not. Oh, Mine is the same except for twelve feet to the right. Uh, 12, yeah. 12, twelve inches to the right. That that's true. Um, <laughs> So we, we both had shit luck on pre-orders. We were both there like oh. the second they dropped. We were F5 and like crazy. Uh, we didn't get their initial pre-order. Mm. We didn't get Target when it dropped earlier this we week. Both. And we and we did not get either of the four drops on Walmart on um, nope. 
what what was it wednesday night or thursday uh thursday it was thursday okay Day so of, you just yeah. did so you just did what everyone didn't expect you to do and that's just to walk to the freaking store and buy one in person exactly because <laughs> i think we were just joking we're just like damn like we, we would really have to like go camp outside the freaking target in order to land it and, and I, I said that like jokingly and then Corey's like yeah no you should totally do that i'm just like Ugh. and then <laughs> And I'm literally sitting there with my girlfriend reading reading this on my phone. And she's like, Are you are you actually gonna do it? I'm just like, I'm not that desperate. I have some amount of shame. <laughs> and then Mesa calls me like five minutes later saying, Dude, are you down? I looked at my girlfriend, I'm like, Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so okay, it paid off. It paid off, man. That's absolutely nice. worth it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So did you stay yeah. out Especially there Especially the fact that we basically it? stole it. <laughs> yeah. So, well, so. I, was about to, I thought y'all were going to tell me, like, yeah, so we found out where the dude who, like, stole, who bought, like, 30 of them and was going to scalp them lived because the dumbass put his full name on Twitter. And I thought yeah. you were going to tell me you fucking robbed that fool. <laughs> Cracks. All right, boys. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it was, like, 7 p.m. It was, like, Can 7 we p.m. when we said, PS2, like, yeah, PS5 we're going to do one. it. And, um... So I woke up at two, we left my mm-hmm. house at like three, we show up to the target and there's nobody there. We're like, yeah, nope. we're the first oh in gosh. line, but Hell there's, there's yeah. but there's five chairs set up like near the entrance, but not like right next to the door. We're like, okay, some people mm-hmm. left their stuff, but they left. That means that's not technically them keeping the seat. Yeah. Though, that, that's, just there. Keep, <laughs> that's just, um, keep. that's just, um, uh, that's just stuff. Chair, the, yeah. Chair that, that's an inanimate shit. object. The chair don't mean shit. Mm-hmm. And, um, the the reason that uh that we went and did this, I the store manager at that specific store um was previously a manager at another company I worked with, so we're we're pretty tight. Big shout out to Jamie, you're the reason why <laughs> Mason and I got it. We knew the exact stock, <laughs> and the situation, and I was kind of texting her throughout, like as it got closer to the morning. We'll get into that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we we're there for like thirty minutes, thirty minutes, forty minutes, something like that, and then three people show up. And they, they go sit in the chairs like, okay, so yeah, we're in front of the line. These people are five. We knew there were going to be exactly five consoles there. So we, we think, yeah, we're good. And uh, a mm-hmm. couple more people show up throughout the night. Mesa and I are just chilling, playing Mario Kart. Uh, Mesa, you're a dick for hitting me with so many red shells. <laughs> wait, wait, so wait, it was right you guys, in front of what, it was wrong. Yeah. What, what time did you guys get there? At like, like 3.30. Okay, yeah. three, three. So, okay. So, so yeah. wait, you said that there was five chairs up front. Did 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 those people show up or did you just take their chairs? No, no, we, I brought my own chair. Uh, yeah, but, I but, didn't. But, but three people <laughs> showed up for those chairs. But as the as the uh, I say night, but as the morning went on, uh, that group got like a shit ton more people in the group. Like it came out of the woodwork, and then there was like a group of like eight or nine of them, and and they were starting to say stuff like, "Well, we were here since last night." Uh, yeah, your so that chairs were here from last night, dumbass. Yeah, it's like yeah. so. And there's uh, there's five of us. So that means we're getting the five. Like, no, there was no one. We're here, and thankfully, where we were uh, positioned, uh, there was a camera right behind us. Like, look, there's a camera right there. They're gonna know for a fact. I know the manager. She's gonna have my back on this. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. pulling the Karen card right now. Mm-hmm. I don't so care. Is, I... is that what she actually did? Huh? Oh no, because we—I uh, mean, if I was completely in the wrong, she she would have had to, you know, go with the people that were in the right. But I, we were in the right. Yeah, we were. But um, oh. yeah, don't put your but chairs there was... in a line. It doesn't count as saving but a the, spot. No, the problem <laughs> is that like there was, there was the the, uh, the A as a group. So you know, we established that we were here, you know, last night with the people who were last here, and there was a we were like, uh oh. You know? we, were getting, we were getting nervous for a while, but it, it basically three came, hours. <laughs> it, it came down to that distinction of, does it matter if you were here last night, but you left? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was right. nuts. If you left, you left. Exactly. It's like you should have you should have kept someone there to save your spots. Yeah. And we actually I got mean, we got very lucky in the, in that if we had shown up while they were still there, like at two then we probably would have been shit out of luck. We showed up like at the exact perfect time when they left, because if we showed up mm-hmm. when there were people there, then they probably would have, you know, left someone there to say like, I'm yeah, holding yeah. these guys a spot. Well, I mean, this is the same thing, but when I met uh, Kojima back in November of last year, when, when, when Death Stranding came out, there, there had been people who had literally fucking slept outside of the GameStop 
overnight oh, wow. at like one in one in the morning and what they had done was it was like a group of nine people they didn't bring fucking tents they just took turns sleeping and someone stood up like stayed up the whole time <laughs> to make sure that like no one stole anything mm-hmm. and they're like yeah, oh no yeah, we a, just like do. we just like took turns That's sleeping commitment. you gotta have a spot it was like exactly mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah is the uh God, is- yeah as the morning progressed and the like some of the employees started saying like okay form a line like mm-hmm. we were already the closest to the door so as door. possible yeah and so like i take a couple steps back so the lady who's opening the door can actually step out she says okay form a line whoever's first i'm like okay we're here first they have camera proof and these fucking assholes from the other group they butt in in front of me you know, like fuck <laughs> social distancing whatever and they wow. just like butt their way to the front of the line like this automatically makes me first i'm like fuck off fucking dicks so wait, but, like, did uh, you fight them? So wait, did you, did you... I, I did not want to get into a heated argument. I stood very firm yep. by, the, by the position. There is a camera. We are factually the first people here. I'm, mm-hmm. And that's, indis- that's uh, indisputable. Mm-hmm. But, so uh, were you uh, the first ones in the door, or were they? You, I, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, oh, like, the, the anxiety oh, of the last three hours, because, like, we were very oh, yeah. confident the we were going to get changed. it. The changed. We were, we, I was talking to, uh, I, I was talking That's to Jamie, my, my friend who's a manager there. And, um, I'm just like, oh fuck. Like, cause she wasn't working that day. And, um, so it came down to like whoever's in the store, whatever they found on the recording. So I'm just like, oh fuck. What if they accidentally, well, not accidentally, what if they go the other way? Mm-hmm. So we were still nervous. It's like, fuck dude, we spent six hours or like five hours being out here. This is going to be a hell of a disappointment if we don't get it. Uh, so the anxiety was real for like two to three hours, mm-hmm. and I w- I was putting on a little bit of a fake uh, facade of confidence for Mesa because I could tell <laughs> he was feeling it. <laughs> Ooh. Oof. But uh, well, once the act- I, I don't think I told you this, but um, the second that they said that and there was that dispute, I mm-hmm. uh, on my phone went to PlayStation Direct. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> uh, I did not know set. that. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to make sure either way you secure the bag. Exactly. I, I just, I do not like confrontation, so I don't know how I would have yeah, dealt I with that. I, know. I basically I, like, hey, you're you're, you're handling this for me because yeah. I can't do this. To, to, to yeah, Mesa's kind say, like, of a midnight launch story, even though I got mine like in the mail. Because I like work at Target, right? <sighs> I got there at 3 a.m. to go to work because I like do the truck, right? And these guys are lined up and they're coming over to me and my like coworkers and they're like, hey buddies, there's a line. And I'm like, yeah, dude. <laughs> Motherfucker, we gotta I go work to here. work. <laughs> we work here. And then he's like crowding around us and asking, like, hey, do you know how many PS5s they have? Do you know like how they're gonna be distributing them? And I'm like, brother, <laughs> they don't even let me touch the PS5s. You think they let me sell them? I touched I put bleach up all day. I don't know about a PS5. <laughs> And then they like kept crowding around us. Well, our manager is not gonna let us in if he's near us. So we had to like tell him to get away from us. Jeez. Right. Exactly. Oh, people are people are insane when it comes to video game yeah. launches, dude. Absolutely. It's oh god. I, yeah. I would like Sorry, to... I don't know if you also worked the Smash Brothers launch, but I did, and I wanted to kill myself. No, I I did I did work multiple different launches though. I can't remember. Um, which one was the craziest? It was the that worst. I oh, the Smash one was the worst. Mm-hmm. We sold out at like twelve in the afternoon, and I have people coming up. I'm like, I could sell you a digital copy, and people are like, I don't want a digital copy. I'm like, well, we don't have any. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> have any physical copies. I'm like, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. It's like, I- just please, Smash, Smash players, go away. <laughs> like, please. And you know they smell bad too. Oh, they're really <laughs> I'm glad I don't have a sense of smell. Think fucking oh, just like take a sh- take a shower, guy. Wash your balls, please. Like, for God's <laughs> sake. Oh, like <laughs> well, no, like I need to know. So, what happened when you guys went into the Target? Uh, uh, we'll, we'll get to, <laughs> but, no, no. but but so uh, to Mace is very good credit because he is the one of the goodest boys I know in the world. Um. And I, I you typically don't like being too confrontational. Like, if I accidentally bump into someone in a grocery store, I'll, I'll say sorry first. I don't care. That's not yeah, a fucking fight I want to get into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but for this, I was... I, I've been trying to be more assertive over, over the years. And this is definitely a situation where I'm just like, I'm not going to be a dick. I'm just going to state the fact and leave it at that. The less you say is, is more sometimes. Mm-hmm. I'm curious but, what uh, this person looked like. An asshole. I, 
I ha I have a vision in my head, and I feel like this person was a taller. Uh, I vision like backwards hat, like yeah. I mean, there was a bunch wearing, of them, but it was like, the, 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 the two big ones. It was a mom. There was there was like two oh, small moms yeah. that were assholes. Yeah. yeah, which you know, which honestly, that was the part that scared me. It was like, oh no, it's a mom. We're fucked. Oh yeah, oh, the no, mom trying to secure it for Christmas is what it is. Yeah. Oh. I. Yeah. No, we are pretty damn sure just based off the number there that. That they were fucking scalpers. There's no way. Oh, yeah. You, you do not need five PS5s in your fucking household. No, you don't. You and, maybe uh, need, like, like maybe two or three. Like, I could see two, three, or four based on, like, if you're a parent getting, like, one for your house. And then let's say you have, like, a, a family member. You have another family member. I could even believe that. But five? Yeah, one no, person fuck that. buying five? No, fuck. No, no, no. But uh, as soon as the asset person came out, they verified that, uh, Mason and I were there first. Um, Mason and I just looked at each other. We just, I know Mason doesn't have a camera right now, but we had this dumbass <laughs> face of, oh! And uh, he said, like, yep, you can come to the front of the line. I just dead, at the guy's name was Freddy. I looked at him like, Freddy, I love you, dude. <laughs> and we got in, and, and, and like, maybe it's because I was tired as all hell, but we, we got mm -hmm. into the target, and they said, like, oh, congratulations, you waited this long. I felt like everyone, or all the employees around me were, like, clapping for me, like this was, like, that some kind of, like, ceremony. Yes. That is exactly... Say, I was thinking the same thing. That is exactly <laughs> what it felt like. <laughs> Uh, See, uh, like, you know, so I, I finished. I finished. I finished at the um. That the um. At the uh. What's it called again? The 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 cashier before I was dated. So I, I so I stepped aside and was waiting. And security guy went to me. He's like, "Oh man, uh, so you, so you're getting to buy or sell? You're gonna play that or sell it?" I'm like, <laughs> "I'm I'm putting too much fucking effort to sell this." Hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah. As, as soon as I got mine, I went to Mason. I'm just like, dude, we gotta like make a beeline to your car because I'm sure some of those other people are real salty over this. Oh yeah. How did you feel? How did oh, we you? Laugh. What was the feeling when the you had home. when you when you like shut your trunk and got into the car? We laughed <laughs> all the way home. It, it was it was like we there was still like some anxiety still leaving our body. It was being tired. It was. It was pure happiness, but we just laughed they, the whole they were, time. Because they were going to follow you. They were going to follow you like, behind you to get, to, to get the fucking PlayStation. <laughs> see, <laughs> see y'all are better than me because while I have immense issues with confrontation, I just shut down. But I guess it's because of the fact that I've grown up in New York that I've hit this point where I don't I stopped caring. And instead, like I would have been walking out with the PS5 in my hands. And as I left past the line, I would have just said, just suck my dick from the back and just fucking love it. <laughs> just so woof. see like it was so weird because i remember when oh. when i waited in line to meet to meet koji everybody was just so like welcoming and just so like oh, oh, happy the, to be there there were there were like three people that were that were waiting in line that we were super cordial with we were just chatting whatever mm -hmm. and like you know that's how midnight launch is supposed to be everyone's like there for for the same thing it's supposed to be community even if not everybody's getting something but the yeah. second those people like try to like butt their way in, I'm just like, ooh, the vibe changed the last three hours. Yeah. Everyone was real well, quiet. Like, well, like my favorite story is so when I met him, I bought the collector's edition of Death Stranding, even though I wasn't even like going to get it. I was like, oh, I'm here. They have it. Why not? And the and the few people that had like parked in line and had slept in line, they were cheering everybody every time somebody walked out with the game. They're like, yeah. Oh, oh, and I awesome. and I walk out yeah. and I'm like five foot four. 166 mm -hmm. pounds and that collector's edition was heavy so i'm like hauling it over my head and they go yeah and they stop halfway through yay and the biggest dude lowers his arms and he goes do you need help because he can just like see me like struggling <laughs> and he's like do you need help do you want me to walk it back to your spot in line i was like That's no so i got nice. it it's okay and i haul it over my head and then everyone goes yeah oh my God. <laughs> like everyone just continues cheering as i'm like walking past them and i'm like thank you to like the dude who offered to help and he was like it's no problem <laughs> like i was just like struggling to carry this fucking thing i was just like i can't do it activate but your it just <laughs> activate your demon form <laughs> i did it just just to make them cheer like i can't believe you guys dealt i mean th thankfully there were a few people online who were super nice i'm just so used to waiting in line everyone just being like a fucking like wonderful human being and just like so excited for, for everybody else all right for the most part oh 
I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Corey. I was going to say, for the most part, um, being a, a person waiting in line for midnight launches and stuff like that, typically people <laughs> are very camaraderie and everything. Um, there's hardly any situations that where, you know, Jose and Mason experience where there's, you know, assholes in line. Um, the, at least that I've experienced personally. Well, I, I, oh. I think what also made it more stressful is that Mason and I pretty much damn well knew there's basically no way we were going to be able to get one of these until like next year at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe during Black Friday, but like, maybe. Uh, yeah, so, it, 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 uh, it's not worth it. Hey, Sarah, so, so, so uh, you're, from what. Hmm. Oh, I'm hmm. sorry, go ahead. Uh, I, I was just going to say, from what I read, and I don't know if this is accurate or not, but I know apparently GameStop is getting like one or two per store on Black Friday. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Friday. One or so, two? One or two, I'm yeah. From what, sorry. I've heard, from what I've heard. Yeah, that's so, going to be so, That's going to be rough. Yeah. <laughs> so, Sarah, I, I believe... I wonder if they just physically don't have enough capital to buy enough for their stores. They probably I, don't anymore. I, they probably don't have enough yeah. to their... Mm-hmm. They're just... Yeah. Because they were they were bankrupt until Microsoft was like, "Hey, we'll throw you a bone," yeah. right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Sarah, I think you're the only one that actually managed to get an Xbox. You want to just go yes. over your experience with that? Yeah. So, um, setting it up was some of the easiest fucking. I fucking use my phone to set up my Xbox. <laughs> like Wait, I really? legitimately. Yeah. So if you have the X, the Xbox, the uh, X Xbox app on your phone, uh, all you have to do is. As soon as you boot up the console, a screen comes up that says, "Would you like mm. to use your phone to like do the setup process?" Oh yeah, I did and the you type in the, the code. PS5. Yeah, yeah, you type in the code that's on your that's on your console using the app. And I was able to set up my entire console, even connecting it to the Wi-Fi via my phone. Wait, and wait. I, hmm? I was like, because I'm just again, I've established this before when we were not live, but I'm just kind of dumb, and I'm really not up to date with like. I figure when you say set up console, you mean you plug it in and you turn it on. Do do you mean like 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 attaching all of your uh, account information stuff like that and like okay yep. So then that makes sense. Okay, so then that's yeah, that is completely really cool. using the phone. Yes, the only so time I, I to touch type anything in on the actual console, just boop boop boop, yes. and then it's all yep. as boop, if boop, it was boop, your boop. old system. Yep. And uh, the only time I had to turn on the, the controller was to set up the console and to update the, the the controller. But as soon as that was done, it booted me in. I had my X- Xbox Live handle on there. I said to re-download all of, all of the games that I was current, currently playing. I did have a bit of a download issue the first day. Um, the servers were running so slow that nothing could download. And was I got it the, the servers or your internet? Or a bit so, of both? I think it's a bit of both because I found out the hard way that if you have the Xbox Series X on the same Wi-Fi channel as another console, shit ain't going to work. Because <laughs> I was trying to play Siege at the same time that everything was downloading. Nothing downloaded. Oh, Nothing. wow. Like, and this was before so, you discovered the might of the Ethernet cord? Yeah, before I discovered the might of the Hell Ethernet yeah. cable. Um, I plugged in the <laughs> Ethernet cable. the might of the Ethernet cable. Yeah, I plugged oh, in the bow. Ethernet cable and was, and was able to download that's a second everything. Place. <laughs> yeah, we'll get. We uh, can get to that later if you want. I was. I broke second with an Ethernet cable. Sorry, go on. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sarah. There's a reason. <laughs> I was. I was able to download everything. Siege also ran perfectly well. Got one for my PlayStation Four as well. Plugged in. We're all good. Um, but yeah, so I've only been able to play Tetris, uh, Gears, Gears Tactics, Gears Four, and Devil May Cry. Uh, for Devil May Cry, I just did the Virgil stuff because I am a terrible person who has beaten that game like 20 times. So I was like, I don't want to do all the Virgil stuff. And I was able to beat that within two days. Uh, it was very short. A lot of fun, though. Uh, the game's yeah. fucking beautiful. Oh, my God. <laughs> I remember you were playing most Xbox. of the Virgil stuff. Hmm? I, I, I played most of the Virgil stuff, and I messed around with uh, Nero, too. And, like, the adaptive triggers on the PS5 controller for Nero are, like, fucking crazy. Yeah, I like, will say the game looks rev, beautiful on the X. Like, you feel Xbox. the whole controller, like, vibrate Ooh. as soon as you rev. And when you do like a charge shot and like shakes the whole controller as soon as it, as soon as it fires, it's really really cool. Yeah, I, so I can't wait until we the, dive into that a bit more. Yeah, on the yeah, X, yeah, Xbox, it looks beautiful. Uh, it runs at sixty FPS. It I am running it at at four K, so it's probably the best mm. that game has ever looked. A quick uh, note: and this is actually disappointing for me and uh, probably for Mesa as well because I know you're a performance fiend like I am. 
Um, apparently the the performance mode isn't that great. It very rarely hits 120, uh, and it's just, it just jumps around wildly. So it's actually a bit more of a stuttery experience, you know, just locking it at 60 yeah. with ray tracing. So that, yeah, that's a little disappointing so, for me. So when I booted up DM, DMC5, a screen popped up asking if I wanted to run it in ray tracing performance or ray tracing graphical. And it, and it even said if you run it at ray tracing performance, the, the game will hitch. Like it said something along those lines. It says, oh... Frame frame rate won't stay steady if you play it at this, but if you but I but I played it on uh on ray tracing game game mode, and I was mm-hmm. able to run it at sixty F- fps with with the ray tracing on, and it looked really pretty. Yeah. So on on that on that similar note though, I did want to I did want to bounce a little bit to um, uh, Spider Man Miles Morales um did a similar thing as soon as I started the game. It asked me if I wanted to play in 30 frames per second um, with uh, ray tracing and all of that stuff, which mm-hmm. I ultimately, I decided to do that because it says that, um, or you can play in, you know, 60 frames per second, 4K, um, but you don't have the ray tracing. You don't have like the extra graphical, um, mm-hmm. you know, bells, boom and of it, bells and whistles. So I'm like, no, I, I want to, I want like a cinematic experience. So <sighs> I, I'm going to do 30 frames per second. So. For, for what it's worth, it, it is really weird that the digital foundry guys, you know, the guys who analyze like all the tech and performance and whatnot, and they're usually always in favor of performance, like over uh, graphical bells and whistles. But this is actually one where they said, you should probably just play in fidelity mode. And I'm kind of mm-hmm. going back and forth between the two. I'm probably going to stick with performance. But yeah, it's really okay, weird. Okay, so first of all, here's the controller. I forgot I had it Whoa. right next to me. Whoa. Oh, yeah. oh my God, it's beautiful. Yeah. It still uses <laughs> fucking batteries because we're in a god given year of 2020. <laughs> I, I prefer that. that by the way. I prefer that. Actually, I big prefer. Especially, as I've had issues charging my my Dual Sense. I wish that I wish the Dual Sense had batteries. Sorry, go on. Do you think? Do you think Microsoft? Do you think Microsoft, do you think Microsoft has a deal with battery companies? Most likely. <laughs> I know yeah. Alan Wake does. So a, a couple other quick things. I did start Gears Tactics. I the game actually read my PC save as soon as I booted it up, which was a lot of fun. And very interestingly, when I booted up Gears Tactics, it it was. The fir- the only option was, do you want to play in 30 FPS or 60 FPS? Didn't say anything else. So I popped it to 60. Game looks fucking gorgeous. I'm not a big tactical person, but I'm a huge Gears person, so I'm having a blast with it. Uh, played played Tetris Effect. Me and a really good friend of mine co opt part of Tetris Effect. Oh my god, co-op is a fucking blast. Please play Tetris Effect. I know <laughs> it that is you so were- much fun. I know that you said that you were having a lot of, and this kind of stems from the internet stuff, but it doesn't seem like you had a good uh, first day with your Xbox just because everything no, was so slow. No, just, just because it was going so slow. And I was just like, I, I just having a bad day to like be- begin with. The uh, Rainbow Six Siege servers were kind of fucked too. So like I couldn't even play that. So I was just having like a really bad day. And me and my best friend are co-oping the Gears of War series and we waited to do Gears 4 on the Series X. Oh my god, I... Like I legitimately cannot put words to how fucking beautiful Gears 4 is. And just heads up, it doesn't have Series X boost. It just has the base boost that Series X gives to old X, X, Xbox games. Oh my god, Gears 4 looks like a brand new game. Like, it looks fucking gorgeous. And it runs nice. a that's, lot better. Like, it's just nuts. <laughs> that's, that's, something that, that's something that that's something um, Jose brought on his Twitter, brought up on his Twitter that I, I really agreed with, which, which is exciting news to say the least is that there's a lot of these old games that um when they came out i guess you could say they were sort of ahead of their time and Mm -hmm. they had a lot of they had a lot of issues graphically um but now that these next generation consoles um exist they're breathing new life into oh my god games. so yeah. so so gears 4 looked amazing to begin with i might be a little bit biased but gears 4 looked amazing to begin with but just the base upgrade that the series x gives to it the character models look much more sharper the fire physics are fucking insane like I, and i haven't test i've not tested gears 5 yet and that got an honest to god series x upgrade i am freaking out to finally play gears yeah. 5 on it because I, it's gonna look fucking gorgeous the whole time. And to me, the Gear series has like always pushed the X Xbox to what graphics can look like on it. And just seeing the base upgrade given to four, which like legitimately makes it look like a brand new game. 
I am just like literally shaking at how excited I am to see five. Because five mm-hmm. was- to me pushed this push the Xbox One X to its limits. And I actually I have my uh d- d- hold on really quick. Uh, <laughs> oh god, it's heavy. Give me one second. Like really quick. It's heavy. What is it? Like this is Whoa. what I played on. Oh this nice. Is my oh. Uh, this is my baby. This is my child. I'm never getting rid of there's this. A, there's but, a like, logo on it. This is uh it, it, it's actually in it. It's in it? Mm-hmm. Holy shit, that's dope. So this is this is oh, what I played whoa. Gears Gears Five on to to begin with, and it looked beautiful on the Series X. All oh, my wrist cool. hurts. Ow. Um, but like I just literally shaking to see how, how how it looks on the Series X just from the base upgrade that Gears Four got. Yeah. Question, and, like, question yes. for you, Jose, because um, sure. oh. you had said you had said that the Series X that people should pick up. Silent Hill downpour for the Series X because it's it's breathing. <laughs> I, I, I want I want to make a slight correction. I have not played downpour, so okay. I cannot attest to the All quality. Right. I, I believe what I did was um, I quote tweeted uh, Tom Hewlett, one yeah. of the old uh, uh, Mr. producers. Tom yeah, oh, Tom. P- poorly poorly shit on Tom Hewlett. He Tom Hewlett he, did nothing he wrong. It's a bad rap. Yeah. Made some um, questionable choices, but can't wait to hear that yeah, corn right. soundtrack. And- uh, there's only so much you can yeah, do yeah, when the corn <laughs> right. soundtrack. Yes, yes, the credit <laughs> song, the corn uh, credit song. Okay. Y'all, y'all it up. There, there's y'all only up. <laughs> there's only so much you can do when higher up corporate people are dictating decisions that you would not do. You kind of just have um, to, you know, do your job, roll with it, and that's a shitty position that he was put in. On the plus side, we I might actually, be getting we might be getting a Silent Hill reveal at the Game Awards this year. So, sorry, I just I just want to go back to what I just want to go back to what Corey was saying about um about Silent Hill. I, I can't wait to be disappointed about Silent Hill. And this this could be a, <laughs> this could be a whole other podcast. <laughs> going back, okay, uh, uh, thank you, T Man, for following. Uh, Are we going to go back to what, um, what Corey said? <laughs> Are we gonna have side podcasts, like spin-off podcasts? One about Game Hearts, one about Silent Hill. Uh, Six people is chaos. (laughs) One one more thing I want to say about the Series X really, really fast is just it's one, it's also a very heavy console. Like I like I'm having trouble holding this up. I can barely fucking lift my Series X having to like drop oh, yeah. it on my table to like I set it down somewhere. It's a fucking monolith. That's how you get um, right. going going back to Corey's question. I I will Yeah. <laughs> um yes, I uh, believe Tom Hill was just games on it too. I'm, I'm gonna test some older 360 stuff out there. Uh, yeah. See what stuff I'm like. Go it. You know how those go. Um, so Jose. Now I want to hear Jose's answer because then I have a Jose. Question. Jose. God Storm. damn it. Jose, talk. Well, you know what? I forgot. I have the power of mute. I'm running the stream. Hell explain yeah. Your, I will explain yourself, sir. <laughs> What did you uh, quote retweet? From fuck, Mr. now, now don't try to remember. My uh, question. You, so basically, there's a lot of performance issues and uh, hitches with um, Silent Hill Downpour. You can say and that just, again. Just with, just with, <laughs> and just, just with a more powerful hardware, you're able to bypass a lot of those hitches, a lot of the frame rate issues, fix the loading, and just uh, inherently because of that more powerful technology, it makes it infinitely more... Uh, enjoyable experience you also, know game design issues still still being there but also new hardware can bring you life past those binary choice issues i'll tell you that you much know, i mean yeah Downpour but it's not as bad as homecoming at least thank you thank you <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but you'd think yeah. with a game with a game all about water it it should have ray tracing you know what are you talking about? Uh, yes, let us be yes. adamant. I don't know yes. what are you talking about? <laughs> let us be adamant. Tracing this Silent Hill downpour. All right, getting getting, getting slightly get to make a splash at that point. All right, getting back oh, on topic. Oh, we're yeah, we're man. gonna do. Well, wait, I have gonna... an on topic story though in regards <laughs> to Tom Hewlett. That's not and Tom it's, Hewlett's not on topic. <laughs> but you brought it up. No, you Corey brought, brought it, it up. up. <laughs> we need to. We're talking about next gen. <laughs> Sarah, two questions. Damn uh, it. Is the user is the user interface um, still exactly identical to to the existing Xbox interface? Yes, but it's a little bit more rounded. Like there's not many mm-hmm. corner edges anymore. Rounded corners. <laughs> it's literally rounded corners. The really Check cool thing. Those corners. <laughs> yeah, the really dumb thing that I really like about it is you can put themes on your profiles now. So like. Okay. 
had like a background to your like profile. There was like a Didn't she do there was years of war theme. There was like a Can bunch you still of do the uh achievements as backgrounds? Uh on your base console itself, yes. On like when you go to your profile, that's what you can put the theme on. Okay. So like I, I I like dumb shit like that. Like I'm still someone who like changes my avatar monthly, so I'm one of those people. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I enjoy this. This is this is this It's is also fun. uh because I got a chance to f- to feel the control the Xbox Series X controller cuz my my roommate is getting one and uh the controller came in uh, earlier this week and it's actually we compared it like we compared every little thing about the controller and how it feels and the layout of it it's actually what? lighter than the xbox one controller and it's also slightly thinner too here Sarah, so, if you want to go ahead and put those like there, right up to the camera yeah mm-hmm. it's a, it's slightly smaller than the xbox one it's controller smaller mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. once again i have gears of war shit but again that makes sense. Just, so but if love- you want I love the D pad that because the D pad is a full circle now, and you can do diagonal directions. So. Yes, mm. it is. Mm-hmm. Sarah, w- what do you? What are your preferences, or, or like, what are the pros and cons yeah. between yeah. the two? Uh, between the controllers. Mm-hmm. So yeah. this one definitely feels a bit lighter to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just that I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's the grips on it or what it is. But I've been using this one for like a super long time. I actually stopped using my Elite con- controller and I started using this one when I was on my normal base at Xbox One X because I just thought it. I just think it felt better. Um, but with this one, I would say the D pad feels a lot better. Like for me, controllers don't really matter as long as my tiny, tiny hands can like actually use it. <laughs> which my hands can actually use this, so I'm all for it. I think the share button's kind of in the spot. Mm. Like, it stopped me from, like, taking really cool screenshots during battles when I was in DMC5, just because I didn't want to, like, lose sight of what I was doing instead of being able to, like, quickly, like, go from this to hitting, like, that. So it felt a little bit funky. But um, I will say, just by holding it and the triggers definitely feel a little bit better than on the original. Uh, but, but keep in mind, my Gears con- controller was the upgraded base Xbox uh, Xbox One X con- controller. This is one of the newer models of it. So I would say while they feel the same, I personally like the grips on this a lot. I think the grips help me, especially someone that has my uh, sweaty hands. Uh, mm-hmm. The grips feel a lot better. Um, but also I just think just everything feels more like, and it's going to sound really fucking cheesy. So bear, bear with me. Everything just feels a lot more next gen kind of like, it's like the buttons feel a lot better hitting, hitting them feels a lot faster and especially more. Yes. And especially more like responsive. This is probably the most responsive. Oh, what do I start <laughs> Everyone has to do it now. Everybody do. Yeah. I'll, uh, oh, I'll, Lord. I'll dab uh, under this desk this is, is what I'll do. This, oh, is, no. this is probably the most responsive <laughs> controller that I've used. Keep in mind, I haven't touched the PlayStation 5 controller yet, but this I one think- is extremely res- responsive, especially during something like DMC5, where you have to be. I think I it's also it worth noting that, uh, the, uh, Series yeah. X and Series S are fully backwards compatible with every single Xbox One accessory, including the mm-hmm. controller. So that's a, that's oh, yeah. a damn plus. Um, I cool. was I was able to play DMC5 using my wired head headphones, which are not made for like next gen consoles, because DMC5 had 3D audio, and yeah, I, I was able to do that. the same thing with. Uh, so I so so I was able to actually like plug it in and play it with 3D audio, which 3D audio is nuts, by the way, because it let me know when like demons were like behind me and I couldn't see them. Yeah. But uh, 3D audio. it's really good but, in uh, Demon Souls too. But like, I really I should try it with Demon Souls then. Um, well, I mean, I wish they made custom versions of these, kind of like how they have this one, because I love this controller a lot. Yeah, I'd, I'd give it time. And it's, again, I'm just, I'm just a gear yeah, side. That so. was the whole big thing, was for Microsoft, right? they got to bring that back for the new generation. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I mean, I would I mean, give it time. Give it, give it a couple months. The new way. I'll that back up again, so people... Uh, <laughs> I actually, I have Mason. a quick question about, like, the D-pad yeah. on the Xbox sure. controller. Because this is, this is a very, like, FGC-specific issue, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, one of the problems on the PS4 pad and on the PS3 pad too is sometimes when you're holding back or if you're holding down, one of the issues is if you're holding at the wrong angle, like if you're you're pressing back, but your your thumb is a little bit too downwards on the back button, sometimes you'll be holding down and back at the mm-hmm. same time instead of just back. 
is that an issue that you could see happening on the D-pad on the Xbox at all? Um, I mean, just just hitting it right now, because keep in mind, I play my fighting games on a PlayStation controller. Mm. Uh, keep in mind, like, so I'm clicking it right now, and I, it doesn't appear to be hitting the, like, mm. weird, like, upper left and upper down buttons while, when, when really I'm doing good. it normally. Uh, I will say that this one is more like the pro, the Elite controller one, because I do have an Elite can, controller. If you want me to bring that over, I can bring that over, too. I was gonna bring uh, that up, actually. It seems like uh, they were carrying yeah. over right. stuff that they learned with the Elite, but yeah, making which it is more really accessible. Oh, yeah, not, it definitely is. It... behind, like, a hundred something dollars. I, There's I really Actually, hope they make an elite like esque thing for the dual shock for the for the dual sense because I would totally uh, spend a hundred dollars on right a really big fancy normal controller. ones right here. Um, the, mm. the only reason I have this on my elite is because I lost my other one. Mm. <laughs> I don't know where the where the like button thing is, but I will say the one thing I love about this is it's not as heavy as the elite is because fuck this controller, it's extremely heavy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, well, that's I, I, that's why I traded mine in. It just got uncomfortable. Yeah, um, I stopped using this because mine actually had a defect in it, so I stopped. Oh, using it. damn. Um, but yeah, yeah, like personally, this is some of the best controllers I've used, and I I just playing DM the DMC on it. It felt fucking great. Like it well, felt responsive. But your personal. controller, your controller shouldn't break your wrists when you're playing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah no, maybe, maybe I, I have little bitch like baby it. hands, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm like, into yeah. like the heavy controllers. My arcade sticks like five pounds. I really yeah, like I have, um, and maybe it's because I'm jacked and I'm so strong. But like <laughs> so, I'm into, it. I'm so I'm so swole, yeah. man. I'm so swole. I like my I controllers like my on, ass, nice I'm, and I'm heavy. Huge. I'm I really have wrist jacked. problems when it comes to certain things, so yeah. I greatly appreciate a controller. Oh, fucking hell! I almost oh. threw it. Uh -oh. A controller that's light. Oh yeah, for and sure. And does it make me feel like yeah. I'm like gonna? Even though, okay, so playing DMC, I did get like carpal tunnel, like the first mm. couple hours because Virgil can mm. go fuck himself. Mm. <laughs> Combos with them is very hard, so I was like getting like carpal carpal tunnel. I had to like stop for like a while. But um, yeah, it's can definitely be rough lighter. Some of that stuff. Yeah. You gotta press a lot yeah. of those buttons. Like he he <laughs> makes use of almost everything. Whereas oh, like God. Nero, sometimes you're only like really pressing um, two or three. All right. Yeah, you guys I wanted... mean, I, 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 mean I, I will say I will re I will re answer this question after I get my PlayStation Five in, and after I use that controller, I will re answer that. So, but right now this thing's really good. I, I like this thing. I just wish it wasn't fully black because of my once again sweaty sweaty hands. I've got oh, I, yeah. I, I got I got I got marks on this thing already. Which oh hi Mark. <laughs> hi Mark. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got, I've got marks on this already. <laughs> And I'm gonna point people to the to the comment I made last week. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? <laughs> All right, you guys want to go ahead and jump into the PS5 part? Well, this is where I, yeah. Mason, Mason, Mason. I had a question about that. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nexus, you brought up how uh, the PS5 has an issue that the PS3 has, correct? Uh oh. Yes. Did I mishear you? So, uh, well, the the DualShock Four D pad. It's a it's a similar issue. So it's basically, the, uh, it's more like this D-pad here. A little bit, yeah. A okay. lot more like that one. Because I tried doing what you described with like the hitting back and down, because yeah. I never really thought about it. And yeah, I think, the PS4 pad, Realistically, like, I think it's worse on the PS4 controller. Uh, if really? you recall, um, if you're familiar with Sonic Fox, uh, there was an exhibition match between him and uh, Goichi, <sighs> who's yeah. like a really big Dragon Ball Fighters player. And Sonic Fox arguably lost that exhibition match because of that error with the DualShock 4 controller. Because he kept he kept accidentally down blocking when he should have been blocking high. And then uh, immediately after that, there's a company that makes custom DualShock 4 controllers that have individual buttons for the D-pads. And they, like, sponsored him and, like, gave him a free controller and stuff like that. Uh, because that is, like... It, I don't really see it being an issue for most games, but, like, for fighting games especially, that can be, like, make or break sometimes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Especially at Battle Beaver there. was the um the name of the company, by the way. Battle Beaver. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I forgot the name. I did notice that I got a lot better at MK at pulling off certain combos in MK eleven when I was using a uh a combo stick that I got on discount oh, yeah. rather than using my pad. And also I, I wanna say I MK is probably more moves. optimized for pad, but like I mean it's personal preference. No, no, it for sure is. I prefer I a mean, lot like, better for I noticed certain movements. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't talk over you, I didn't mean to. 
I, I perform better for arcade stick in most instances, but usually it's personal preference. A lot of modern games no, are actually optimized for pad. Mm. Mesa, do you want to go yeah, and I... just jump into maybe your general experience with the PS5 so far? Um, sure. Um, so it's, it, it's been fast. Uh, <laughs> Hella fast. Um, bye bye loading screens. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I've been so for PS5, been mainly playing Spider Man and um, Astro's Playroom. Um, which, which one did you touch first? Uh, Astro, because you know Spider Man had to download. Um. I, th- I guess going off that real quick, um, mm-hmm. I know I've way. probably been like the most vocal about being concerned about storage issues uh, since this is an SSD and that's only 667 gigabytes of available space. But I'm uh, before the show started, I downloaded um, DMC5, which is a 40 gigabyte game, in like 15 minutes. Like the download speed, whatever hardware they have in there is fucking insane. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's going to be an issue... Um, have having space um, as as long as you don't have like bandwidth restraints. Like if you have unlimited internet, you're good. Storage won't be an issue. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So for for Spider Man though, I just want to talk about Spider Man real quick. Um, I want to get my thoughts out. Um, for Miles Morales, uh, I actually ended up picking um Fidelity too, but for a completely different reason than everyone else. Uh, I have played so much of Spider Man PS4. That that game in 60 FPS looks and feels wrong now. <laughs> oh, absolutely. When was the <laughs> last time you played it? Last time I played... I mean, uh, it's what my PS4 was playing. I, like, if I boot up my PS4 right now, it's playing Spider-Man. But when um, was the last time you actually touched it? Because I, I did a replay through, I want to say, like, six months ago? I play, I play it on and off about at least once or twice every week. Yeah. Okay. That, that yeah. regularly just stream himself in Discord. Just, just like, swinging around. It's great. Just, just having fun. <laughs> um. So. So yeah. Um. So it's a but game looks incredible. Like when you when you switch between performance and uh, fidelity, you really notice that not not your reflection in the buildings, but the lack of the world's reflection in the buildings. And that okay. that really that really changes. Um. At least for me, how 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 it uh, how how the game f- feels. I know and before how you the, feel concrete in it. I know before the um, the podcast, the I, I switched over to performance, and like you can very noticeably notice, you know, the frame rate difference. Uh, but I haven't like really delved into it. Mm-hmm. But um, I'll, I'll probably wind up just jumping between the two, like every thirty minutes or so, just to see what I prefer. Mm-hmm. But um, I w- I will say this when um on what going off of what Mason said, um while playing miles morales in in fidelity mode uh it was so i don't i don't know what it I, I don't know what it is maybe it's the loading times or whatever but it's i have never played a game that is just so smooth with its transitions mm-hmm. that it there's mm. there is literally no like weird black quick black jump cuts or like slow you know slow renderings of like a scene or anything it's just like instantaneous. It's just like constant, like back and forth jump cuts. Uh, like when there's a talking scene or when there's a fighting scene, it's just yeah. seamless, constant, crisp graphics. And I'm like totally floored with how does beautiful it, it all looks. It's, it's kind of creating does a bit of a weird. Like, does it sorry, feel like how God of War did it? How like God of War was all one shot. I yeah well it's it feels seamless now like it, it because it's not like it's not like last generation where they had to specifically make a game to be seamless like God of War it's like now we have the hardware to make games feel and look seamless like they I, should be okay. I really think we dope. touched upon it I upon can't wait in, for um, seven remake part two because it does the same thing in part yeah. one and like I, with the new hardware that's gonna be so cool. I think we touched upon it in a, one of our first episodes where, you know, like, uh, like Corey brought up God of War. They have to hide the loading scenes by making you go like very tight corridors. You have to slowly nudge through this crevice. Meanwhile, something like Half-Life 2, which had horrible uh, loading loading stops, now is, is absolutely completely 100% seamless. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, and I remember there was a video, I think like two weeks ago, someone was playing The Witcher 3 on the Series X. And it it loaded too fast to the point where the world 
itself wasn't no, there. So you like see, all the way. So you see like under the ground and then it pops up. So now um uh, basically what they're having to do is to add a, like a one second like black fade yeah. to most games now, so they don't run into that uh, issue. One of the funniest ones I saw is uh Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Uh it has these funny little like loading screen gags. You don't even see the text start to appear. No. You see like the first like letter of the gag will appear because it like like slowly spells it out. You see like the first letter will appear and then it's done. You, you oh, won't wow. see any of them ever again. It's, it's weird to me that like because I've, I've said before, like I genuinely am kind of sad that we're not going to see loading screen as like a game design mm-hmm. aesthetical thing anymore. But I mean, not, I wouldn't want to keep that at the cost of progress. But it's funny to me how I actually never thought about the fact that we've never, as much as things have gotten better and better and better until this point where now it's literally just, you're there. We've never really gotten away from loading screens till now. Even if though they've gotten more seamless, they've gotten faster, they've got, like, like I think back to, I guess the most notorious one would be like, when Crash Bandicoot back in the day had the, and I can't remember if this is actually in the game or if it was some kind of April Fool's joke that like became real later, but like uh, the collecting fruit on the loading screen because it was going to distract you from taking too long. And like when that was a thing, you would have games in loading screens while the mm-hmm. actual game loaded. The infamous uh, Bandai Namco patent. Yeah. Well, I oh, which mean, one was that? So... Oh, they had a patent for years that they yeah. were the only ones that could use loading screen mini games. Like no one else could do it, and sure enough, like oh I think we God. talked about it last week. Now that the patent's expired, it doesn't fucking matter because now loading screens aren't a thing. Well, so when I was playing games on my Series X, Gears Tactics still had a loading screen in between missions, but to me, it didn't seem more like a loading screen because it was just like a character explaining what the mission was, and there was the bottom X on the screen, like oh, press this if you want to skip it and go straight to the mission and when i was doing dmc5 the loading screens were like five times faster like they were oh, still yeah. there and but it, dmc5 is 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 the same thing you can press x to exit out of the i found myself no. like screen. kind of sitting back while there was a loading screen just because i was so used to it and then i would notice like oh shit it's already over yeah. when like, am i supposed I to eat my food over. now yeah, i actually I have to stop really playing Twitter. the game i just had a real bad realization <laughs> y'all what but, Anybody playing near replicant on their fucking PS5 is going to miss half the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot of. I'm shit not in joking. Those screens. Yeah, honestly, they'll probably put them oh, into put... like just notes you can pick up instead. I guess yeah. Well, because uh, for the chat, not like uh, for the chat, just feels like a, a Nexus pretty much lined it up. But like, there's key story stuff and there's Very like key. not key story Very stuff important. in loading screens. So like. I'm wondering if maybe they already worked since loading screens are already faster anyway. I'm now wondering if maybe they reworked that or if they kept just the ones that you're not really supposed to be able to see all of in one cut anyway. Or or they're doing it like how DMC or, or what Gears Tactics did where you can choose mm. to exit the load screen by like pressing X. Could work too. That would be good. That would be actually perfect. I I for so, I haven't touched Demon Souls and we'll let Nexus um talk about it in her segments. But um, mm, this is a if, very if, if, it feels weird because <laughs> obviously, like people like complain about Bloodborne's loading screens; they were atrocious on the PS4. And um, in a no, weird no, way, and no, weird way, no. I'm going to appreciate them because they're a really nice pace of like, okay, this is your time to stop and reflect. How can you do better on this? Versus you know, just tossing you back in there. I and mean, obviously, you still have to run back to the encounter and whatnot. But it was kind of nice having that as just like as a chill out moment. Yeah. Uh, Mesa, go, me, going like, back to. Um, actually, I'll talk about it later when we talk about Demon Souls. Okay. But uh, can Mesa, I also you go and... can I also talk about Demon Souls with Nexus? Yes, well, you may. Absolutely. <laughs> Mesa, love... how was the rest of your PS5 experience? Um, um, uh, Astro Bot's Playroom is one. <sighs> I've never considered myself a PlayStation person. I've always considered myself, you know, more of a Nintendo person. But I've always paid attention to Sony. You know, I've had their consoles every once in a while. My friends always had them. I always played at their houses. So, like, going through that game and getting all the collectibles, it it was such a nostalgic, like, oh, like oh, emotional journey. One of all the, all the uh, collectibles are, us. like... Um, <laughs> they're they're oh. like they're pieces of hardware from like Sony lore, and like there's some like really forgotten about stuff in there. That's mm-hmm. pretty cool, dude. I didn't even know that a pocket station existed in Japan. Yeah. Neither did I. 
Yeah. Oh, and, and for anyone curious, I screenshotted a lot of <laughs> Easter eggs and stuff over on Twitter. Oh, yeah. I There's must have done like 30, 40 Nashville fucking theory. screenshots. You were having there's a, there is a Demon Souls uh, reference yes. in there, too. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, there's a, there's a Made in Black. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a reference. Uh, I got all, everything. In there, Dante's in Wait, there. Wait, Pyramid. Oh, at the oh, Seth yeah, Kage yeah, on Twitter. Yeah. You can find all of it. Yeah. I, I haven't yeah. finished it yet, so I. One. There's all I haven't finished it, so I still have yet to see so, all the references. So really they forgot his old heavy tongue, rain bro. one. I, I spent as much time I doing Twitter screenshots for this yeah. as much as I did playing it, and it yeah, is I just. Thought- it is just such a wonderful fucking launch game and it's, it's free. It's pre-installed mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. as a game itself. It is damn good. And then you add all the nostalgia on top of it, all the Easter eggs. It, I just had a dumb smile on my face the entire fucking and, time. You know, what's you know, what's interesting like that you bring that up. Museum. Yeah. And, and uh, my boyfriend actually brought up a good point and he's like, well, why doesn't, why doesn't Xbox do something like that? I'm like, I Why doesn't know. Nintendo like they oh, have Smash Bros? Is, oh, but this would be Nintendo, perfect for Nintendo. Nintendo could do something like this. Nintendo this actually games. brought up a conversation with some other friends. I was saying that uh, Xboxes are probably the most cynical consoles, and the yeah. fact that they are boxes that play video games and they don't really, <laughs> they only feel like they Not have except for except for the hard. Series X. Yeah. I would say the Series X oozes a lot more personality than I feel like I felt was missing from it, previous Xbox. It has Spike fake like, green paint on it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like a, a monolithic like rectangle. Having like the green bit at the top mm-hmm. is like it's oozes personality. It's really it's I just so love the balls dumb, to be like it looks simple. like a PC tower. What the fuck do you want? Oh. Shut up. <laughs> I, I wanna talk <laughs> I'm calling it the monolith. I'm calling it the monolith from like two thousand one of Space Odyssey because that's literally yeah. what it is. I want, I want to talk a bit about um, this relates so much to Astro because you can't really disassociate the two, but the dual sense controller, the oh, new yeah. um, placing controller, fantastic. but like it, it, it's just yeah. such a, a fantastic, fu- Mwah, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's such a technical <laughs> showcase for what the console and what the controller can do. Um, mm-hmm. So there's the haptic feedback, which will give you like mm-hmm. a very uh, diegetic like feel for like whatever your character is doing if you're using your lasers you can feel it go from like the top of the controller down to the bottom if you're taking a yeah. step with your left or right foot it's left or right if you're walking on sand area. it feels like sand oh yeah rain area it feels like there's actual like rain falling so whenever deep. whenever you're on ice or you're on the glass you can feel like the little yeah. feeling in there mm-hmm. and, the, and the sound on the uh, speaker actually does a lot to complement that as well yeah. So there's and, uh, also real quick about the speaker. Uh, so I was watching my boyfriend play bug snacks, and every time you you catch a bug snack, mm-hmm. it actually it like coming? it squeaks its it squeaks its name That's through so the speaker. Cute. So like a strawby, like the strawberry one. When you catch a strawby, you'll hear strawby like through the speaker. <laughs> <That's adorable. laughs> I'm, gonna I, this. I'm just gonna lose it. <laughs> I know the uh, I know the PS4 did that as well, but the audio quality wasn't there and it wasn't it utilized wasn't as much. Mm-hmm. But like combined with the haptic feedback, it's really freaking cool. And um, I mean, I feel like the PlayStation 4's uh, in like the like the speaker in it was always best used in horror titles. I think back to uh, the Evil Within two when you fight that like Sadako type ghost. How mm-hmm. her like. Her like groans and her like footsteps would come through the controller and honestly scare the piss out of me. Hmm. See, my or favorite like, use of that kind of oh, or God, like sorry. the baby. I, uh, I, baby you are a strong character. person for finishing that game, by the way. I cannot I cannot wait to experience the the haptic the haptic feedback with this controller with a horror game. Because oh, that's, oh ab- uh, Resident Evil Eight, baby! Mm-hmm. A lot yeah, of this technology, yeah. like three D audio and the the controller is like it's going to be terrifying for. I, I was mm-hmm. describing to a co- in Demon Souls. I was describing <laughs> to a coworker like they said like oh what is haptic feedback? I'm just like it's basically surround sound except it's rumble like on your controller. A hand massage. You have exactly. to really, and even then, explaining it verbally is hard to understand because you just yeah, have to but- experience it. Like, uh, like, I'm slightly annoyed that uh, Sony didn't follow suit with uh, Xbox, you know, allowing you to use the DualShock 4 and mm-hmm. accessories. But if it's doing, like, all this kind of cool shit, like, fuck yeah, sign me up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, uh, and I didn't know this. Apparently, even the new Call of Duty and um, mm-hmm. uh, makes use of it. And, That's uh, awesome. I guess the other part we didn't talk about, the uh, adaptive uh, triggers... Uh, they'll apply yes. more pressure based on whatever context you're doing. Like in uh, mm-hmm. Astro, if you're launching your rocket ship, you have to like press down on the damn thing. It gives you a lot of 
it gives you a lot of uh, restraint on it. Mm. There's also, a gear. Same thing with the bow and arrow. There's a gear in each of the buttons of the oh R2 God. and L2. So that's what's that's what's holding it back is that there's a little gear that resi- that resists your pressure and then Would it you gives say away. That it's a metal gear. Oh Lord, I hate you. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> just so Get it. leave the camera. Leave the camera. Okay, <laughs> I, I will say okay, okay, you, okay, using well. a. <laughs> Using a bow in a game has never Doing felt back. as freaking good. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to. Well, maybe I will speak for everyone. I think I'm the only one here who's who does archery uh, semi regularly, and uh, feeling the uh, pressure as you pull back and then feeling it loosen as as you go on the on the trigger is fucking really fucking cool. Well, mm-hmm. I'm sure you saw that they announced that The Last of Us Two is getting haptic feed feedback. I do not want to touch that game until they put that in because mm-hmm. oh, that's going to yeah. be beautiful. Oh, yeah. They said that it's coming. I can't remember if they said December or early early next year, but they said they're actively working on haptic feed feedback on it. Oh, there goes Blaine. Uh oh, Blaine did. Oh god, are you okay? <laughs> There's um to go back to like DMC five. Like like I was saying with Nero, when you do a max act, it and it just rumbles the whole controller. It really feels like mm-hmm. just like the red queen is like or the, yeah the red queen's like ready to fucking go mm-hmm. like it's uh, so cool well and even like the blue rose like it shakes the whole controller and you fire it so so dope and, and just, even something as simple as like when i started uh miles morales like and you're sitting you're standing as miles in yeah. the subway and mm-hmm. the door opens you feel it on the right side of your controller oh, and you feel the you feel the subway coming to a halt and it's just like this is insane. This yeah. is absolutely innovative technology. It really helps with immersion, like a lot. Yeah. I have a question. Mm. Yes. What's what's our prediction for how they're going to incorporate haptic feedback when you're ordered by Ronald Reagan to introduce crack into the inner <laughs> of Chicago <laughs> in Call of Duty? <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> Call of Duty is going to be good, right? You'll um, shoot people, right? Oh, Game. I mean, I mean, I mean, racism's dead, right? That's the thing, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no! See, gender, see. gender identity is broken because you could be non-binary. Oh, you can be Listen. gender classified. <laughs> you can be Jesus gender Christ. classified. <laughs> All right. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, What's true, your gender man. soldier classified? I'm just, it fucking I'm... says classified <laughs> on it when you pick non-binary. What Wait, the fuck? Does it really? What? The f- what? Yes, it's classified. Oh like, my gender my pick non-binary. <laughs> like, what the <laughs> fuck? That's fucking That's almost crazy. worse than just not including it. Wow. Yeah. That's really funny. Oh, oh fucking, fucking crazy. <laughs> Do what gender male, they, they, female they classified? They don't want because they don't want to. They don't want to trigger, you know, their their main yeah. base, which is you know conservatives. So the chuds. <laughs> yeah, God <laughs> forbid. Oh fuck! And don't so like really, Jose, really, really quickly. So this is the first time that COD has let you pick your gender. Black Ops Three allowed you to, but the character had two different faces, three different styles of bald hairstyles yeah. and literally had the same dialogue as the as like the male character trust me i checked the pronouns were just changed oh, there wow. was nothing different about this i mean that's actually not a problem to me as far as like i would rather there be less indication of like that being such a huge like i'm not saying you shouldn't write a story for women no I'm just yeah saying, like it, it, it's weird to me when people it's like the whole it's why when i go off about gender bands on twitter and why i think they're shitty it's like when you put so much emphasis on being this gender means that you have to have such a a different story and a rewrite like no no, no. Mm-hmm. Just, just let people pick their pronouns let people be who they want that's no, what yeah. you do don't and be don't, that don't person the... who assumes all this other shit on top of it don't so it's let, like why let your pronoun be classified <laughs> Why does why does the story why would the story have to be different based on the person's gender? That makes no, no sense. No, like what yeah, no, like, I, I wasn't I wasn't thinking um, like the story basically different on the gender. I I I was thinking was they basically did no like like the only dialogue change there was was there was like a pronoun change, which is fine, but at least like put in a little bit more effort. Have characters say different stuff. Well, I think it's mm-hmm. also dumb because people are saying like, "Well, what about my realism? There are no women soldiers." I'm just like, dude, you're playing a game you where you get both of your legs, yeah. and you have Christopher Maloney from fucking. Is he you can get what? you can get shotgunned oh, in the face. Phone. You get you get jelly on your screen, then you hide, and then you're all good. 
I love how I love how these uh sticks to your brain. I love how these these cucks like to hide their I love that you're re behind. I love that. I love that you're reclaiming that. Hell yeah. I was about to say I was about to say I'll support reclamation all day, but let's let's take a chill and sit down for a minute. And like my dog is is barking because he's mad about hearing the word because now like now we have a situation where it's like you know you can commit war crimes, but you can do it as like a girl boss. You can do it in like a like yeah. a You can be a piece of shit too. We need more female drone strike pilots. <laughs> we need more classified genders introducing crack exactly. to Chicago in 1969 exactly. or whatever that actually was. Jesus happened. Christ. I'm so sorry, it may I have been it may have forward. been the 70s or the 80s. My idea of time is fucked up and really yeah. fucked up. This, this is a but this is a beautiful episode. No, I was just I was just gonna say that I'm I, I love how these people love to hide their bigotry behind well it's not historically accurate oh, yeah. they're the biggest like, snowflakes uh, i'm reclaiming that there, one too there's yeah. literally like i'm i gotta bring it serious for a second you can literally if you open a fucking history textbook or sociology textbook or any kind of you can you find that there is evidence of the ideas of what you would consider just non cisgender the idea of genders outside oh, yeah. the binary mm-hmm. gen people uh, uh changing their gender let's just put it that way for the sake of this discussion mm-hmm. that's not exactly how it works like um i mean fuck the the idea of the third gender in a certain culture country uh, certain uh, ethnic groups in india i forget the exact terminology it's yeah, not absolutely. literally a third gender it's like a non-binary identity yeah um these um, things have existed for thousands of years. Non-binary thousands. pronouns have existed in these languages for yes, for <laughs> yeah. centuries. Even. Yeah. I think people always that... go the they them pr- singular pronoun is not properly cr- grammatically correct, and it's like it has been in in the English language longer than like I think what like than this ver- current version of the English language has existed like for two hundred years. It was the original book, or the fuck that like my boyfriend was telling me the other night, like how man did not originally mean the word man by itself did not originally mean like when you say postman or fireman, it didn't mean man gender. It meant mankind, and that's what everyone assumed it meant because it didn't have that connotation. Like these people have no idea what the fuck it actually. I mean, if you go back to, not to get too dark, go back to like 1920s, 30s Germany, there was a big institute that champion like lgbt rights oh, God, and yeah. research right mm-hmm. and completely destroyed by the nazis <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. By everything more yeah. republic yeah. yeah no it's uh there there's a lot of there's a lot of lost pages in our history yeah. that that uh centuries you know that yeah. that het he- het mm-hmm. cis culture doesn't realize yeah. yeah they'd rather they they this is i mean not all cis hats. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows that I mean that when I say yeah. it. But like, <laughs> the thing with a lot with cis hat people in general seems to be with these these kinds of people that do this shit is that it's either we want to stamp out the culture, and or we want to pretend it doesn't exist. And they've been doing it because it like quote said, unquote because yeah. it quote unquote doesn't make them comfortable. It makes yeah, them exactly. uncomfortable. And it's exactly. like I'm sorry. I I'm not I'm not comfortable with being hated on yeah. because of who I am. I'm so glad my existence <laughs> makes them uncomfortable, so they get the fuck away. From I, me. I just want. I just want to say I love that I have everyone on here and I will never take the fucking LGBT LGBT tag off of my streams because Hell fuck yeah. you if you have a fucking problem with that. You can go fuck yourself. I only take it off Whoa. sometimes I forget to put it back on. Such language. I don't like putting that much effort into my fuck. stream. Fuck. Mesa, how's Spider-Man? Anyway, Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah Mason, you really, you really you get the feel the swagger of a black teen. Um, Hell yeah. Dude, it's, like I, yeah. I love how uncon- fuck. I love how unconfident he is. Like the the whole chatter, he's he's so meek compared to well, uh, Peter. I mean, you have to remember that he's he's seventeen, so he's it, basically the same age mm, as Peter when he started. When he started, started. right? So yeah. it, it's just such a great yeah. personality shift, too. It's 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 not just Spider Man, but but younger. It's so it's the yeah, coolest Spider Man. Well, true. it's also it's, it's a lot of it's yeah. It, it's funny because people actually in the city people recognize that there's a second Spider-Man and mm-hmm. they're like, "Oh, you're the other Spider-Man." Like <laughs> that's what they say to him. Mm. So, like... <laughs> yeah. Um so so uh so you know, one of the things that Miles has um so one of the things that you know, Miles can do is that you know, he has his bioelectricity and he can turn invisible. 
Um, but that's to offset the fact that he's uh, significantly weaker than Peter. I'm playing this game on hard. Is he more like, than the cannon, difficulty. basically? <laughs> oh, yeah. He he can't jump as high as Peter. Enemies take so much longer to, to knock out. It's, it's um, and, uh, you know, he has significantly less gadgets than Peter because, you know, like, it's going to focus more on his powers. Um, I, cool I noticed things- when I was playing, because I only played the first 20 minutes, but you mm-hmm. don't have the click l3 r3 ability you, you're like you're using you're holding l1 and then using like uh some electric abilities yeah so yeah because yeah um so yeah i would say like that the way the game work really shifts from peter to miles is that miles is a lot more like all right what's the issue take it out now with all my power you know right versus peter which is you know just kind of um he can just kind of take take it all you know? uh, in the end game of the uh, 2018 Spider-Man game, I was just launching so many gadgets and just constantly oh, yeah. using my freaking uh, wh- whatever power mm-hmm. it was. I gave you like eight freaking finishers in a row. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I would just like I would do the um, the speed run tech, which is that you put on equalizer and then you get electric webs and then you just zap a bunch of people. Once they're all zapped, just put on equalizer and they all go out in one hit. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Miles is very different. <laughs> very, yeah, I, very different. Uh, yeah, I've only put in 20 minutes, but that's uh, next on my list. Um, that's maybe like, I think one of the strongest things about PS5 is like, when I think about what I want to play, like, I don't even know if I want to get to Miles yet, because there's so much other stuff to play. We have a really strong launch window for PS5 right now. I think this is the best launch. I think this is, I, I think for sure, at least the best... Um, launch lineup for yeah. for playstation console absolutely i think if not you know consoles in general i mean it had rezo gun oh, yeah. ps1 Rezo-Gun. Oh, have like God. a stupidly good yo ps1 was actually pretty, pretty good for a launch window actually but i mean but here we have uh you know there's astro there's spider-man there's yeah. demon souls like i think all bug three snacks. of those games bug are fuck I, I haven't played demon souls oh, bug snacks but like all those are like <laughs> absolute fucking I knock it out of the park bangers i i don't Thanks. Let me look it up. Uh, I'm, let me fact check. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, yeah just I having all I remember these... that being my first PS2 game, and I can't, and I didn't get one at launch, but I remember that being a big deal for some reason. Yeah, I will say that when I opened my X my X Xbox up, I I was like, oh, I have Gears Tactics, and that's it. <laughs> so fun fact, <laughs> I, was, I actually uh, uh, it was the, the first it was time year after Silent Hill Two was a year after. Okay, the first oh, okay. time I ever played Silent Hill Two was actually on the original Xbox. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Has any has anyone had any issues fitting their consoles into their current like setup physically? So no, thankfully so no. So no. Um, for me, I'm having trouble fitting it in. I have it like sitting on the top of my desk. It's currently kind of covering the corner of one of my monitors. It's so big, but it's and and like that kind of sucks. But I can figure it out. I think. One of my problems with the PS4, as much as I really liked it, or PS5, as much as I really liked the design, it's a really awkward shape. It's really big. It's yeah. Kind of unwieldy to carry around. If you're a tournament mm-hmm. organizer and you got to carry these things around a venue, it's going to be really awkward. Yeah. Because like it's it's just difficult to really get a good grip on it and hold it like comfortably. Uh, and I mean, setting it up in a way that doesn't take up that much space in front of a monitor or behind one it's going to be kind of not not to mention as my roommate pointed out to me that the disc version has just like this giant tumor on the side of it for the disc yeah. drive. oh you know what i completely uh, forgot I, to mention I, earlier if, if um you lay the, it down it's not much of an issue yeah I, I completely forgot to mention uh both mason and i did get the disc i know i would have preferred the digital but that yeah. that's all they had it was either get the disc or don't get it at all yeah. I mean, Jose, if I you feel bad, say, you can just yeah. give me yours. I'll take a. I mean, like, <laughs> like, I will I'm say still waiting. Like I'm still waiting on that Wii U character. for you. I, I will say it. for my for my X Xbox, I was too scared because my because my TV stand has like three cubby holes on like to the right and to the left of it. I was too scared to lay it down inside of one of the cubby holes because yeah. I didn't know if it would over overheat or not so i legitimately have my x xbox on top of my tv stand and i'm planning on putting my playstation on the other side of the tv stand just because i'm too scared to put these damn things side sideways like i'm too scared to because i'm like oh i was like hearing that that the xbox series x don't know if it's true or not but i was hearing that it got hotter if you set it sideways like long instead of like 
that. And I was scared. I was like, I don't want that shit to happen. So and I'm like if, forced to like put them on top of things. You, you don't want that that vape juice coming out. Oh, no. Lord, that vape <laughs> stuff was so funny. It was so clearly fake, and people <laughs> fell for it. So it was. So yeah, bad. yeah. For those that don't know, there's a little viral video going around on like someone's Xbox smoking out of the vent on top, and uh, people very quickly went, yeah. "No, that's vape. Man, that's fucked up. That's well, fear mongering. You shouldn't do that." The person <laughs> fucking like, really bought that. Repost it saying like, "Hey, this the OP says it's real, blah blah." blah. And it's like, "Yeah, the OP, I'm sure says it's real. That doesn't yeah. mean it's real." <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay. I know at least believe, for, uh, Do you believe everything you read on the internet? <laughs> what? You're telling me people would go online and just lie? The internet's yeah. lying. People can lie. It's not against the law, guys. Wait, my friend doesn't have it. My friend's All uncle doesn't work in Nintendo? Been really accurate. Uh, guys, racism is illegal. That means no one can be racist. Come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Show me one law. Show me one law. <laughs> that That's the Colin <laughs> logic right there. That's the oh. that's the Shapiro that's the Shapiro standard. Sh uh, Shabibo? Yeah. You mean Shabibo? No, no, Just no. defend Shabibo, yeah. <laughs> Shapiro <laughs> standard. Show me a single law that oh, indicates that's too that. Oh, close. Don't say that. <laughs> you are too accurate. Wait, oh. it's too accurate. Wait, ben say Shapiro something. What happens when you make hot takes all day in high school and no one ever actually beats yeah. you? My around. favorite and part he, about yeah, he's like please say freaking... something. He's that freaking nerdy kid in like in high school. It's like, well, actually, it was actually about this, and it's like, oh my god. Nexus, please, please do a monologue in Shapiro's I, voice. I can't ad lib as Ben Shapiro because I don't really, I don't, I have his cadence down, but I'm not as good as like ad libbing. Ta talk about what? Talk about what? Mm -hmm. like Jordan Peterson. <laughs> what Jordan ass P word? Make that pull up. Pull up, game week. <laughs> so, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Swipe your nose like a credit card. <laughs> Wait, I no, the best part of that was when he made the fall. I, I can't remember because there's so, there were fake ones made and there were real ones and they look the same. So I don't so remember. Funny. But the one that was just like, oh my god, well, but it was like it was the whole thing like you know you all keep saying like. Oh, it was the best cell phone, and now I can't even remember what it was. Like it was like, <clears> oh, y'all keep saying my wife, but you know, and you know, in this relationship, oh right, yeah, we don't worry about that. And everyone was just like, wait, so are you admitting that your wife is unfulfilled, my guy? What happened? <laughs> I, maybe this is cynical. I don't think that's true. I think he's just saying that to get people to talk about he, him. To be he, totally honest, I don't think he actually has a wife. Is, is he genuinely he that stupid, or is he's he just a shill really? for whoever's giving him money? The problem with both are bad. I don't want to get too real. The problem with these people is they're not stupid. They're actually really yeah. smart. They're yeah. just fucking evil. No, it's Ben's evil. actually Ben's they, actually one of the smarter ones. Yeah, really they do smart. not. They do not believe half the shit that they spew. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And also, they speak fast and confidently in such a way, especially Ben Shapiro, that he makes his opinions seem like fact. Yeah, that's why it's hard yeah. to ad lib. This one. The reason, the reason why people, I'm gonna bring up Ant Man because fuck it, why not? The the reason like Ian Miles Chong right. is as inconsistently ridiculously stupid God, as he is Ian on Twitter Miles is Chong. because of the fact that if you're like me and you were not only know, knew him long enough ago that like when he was a leftist, but also like long enough a ago, classical actually, liberal one might say he was he was a classical <laughs> liberal and I was at the mutuals at this back fire. back when everyone mixed him up with Arthur Chu. <laughs> Yes, well, oh, no. no, before that. Yeah, this Radical oh, century. Even before that. No, even no, before no, that, no, damn. No, 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 no. Before that even. This is back when he was actually anti-Gamergate and was oh. supporting Zoe Quinn. And people on the Gamergate side of things were bringing up the fact that he made all these fucking anti-Semitic remarks, which he did. He did. But me believing that, you know, he's fighting the good fight. This He was maybe younger. We've all I did shitty things when I was younger, and I thought... Maybe, you know, he went through that, not like he went through a fascist phase, but maybe he almost got radicalized and realized that was shitty and got out of it. So I forgave him. I even personally said to him, I forgive you for your past misdeedings. You're doing the work now. Imagine how fucking pissed I was when I saw him just completely flip into what he was, into the, into becoming another right grifter when yeah. that shit happened with, um, I don't want to, oh fuck, I can name that because no one in this chat's going to.
do anything shitty. When Tariq Musa wrote the the uh, review of Witcher, and that mm-hmm. is what that's what red pilled fucking E. Miles Chong. Someone saying that <laughs> oh, Witcher's really really good, but there's not a lot of black people in it. That's, that's, he also that was I, the I, one that came out and said, "Oh, they put non-binary in Call in Call of Duty." <laughs> I, no, yeah, that's what like, started this fucking discussion. I, I don't know if I said on the podcast last week, but I'm reading through the Witcher books right now, and uh, I don't know if they know this, but the Witcher is in, an incredibly fucking progressive series. There, there's a big yeah, part where uh, where Geralt and his, and his and his travel companion is just like, "Hey, if uh, Bilva wants to have an abortion, that's a woman's right. That's inalienable. Yeah. You have no say in that shit." Geralt is like a very Geralt realistically said- written disability too that they never yeah. mention in the games. Yeah, that was Geralt really weird. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I saw that article. I I, I like, Nilfgaard, the evil empire is up. They respect women's rights. Nilfgaard I will I will say this I name. I really like this um, evil. I really like uh, this <laughs> thing of what something that Hassan said a few weeks back or something like his that. Name is... His name is Hassan. Uh yeah, <laughs> he uh he had mentioned that um He's like conservatism or, or, you know, republicanism is not, is not a natural way of thinking. It's not a human, it's not a natural human way of responding to things. Um, if you're like a, a regular ass human being with compassion in your heart and, and empathy, then that you shouldn't, you shouldn't be leaning to the right at all, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's just, it, it boggles me. That so many people, I mean, it, I know why it's for money and it's for views, but it's mm-hmm. like so many people on the right, like, you know, Ben Shabibo and, and all these other douches, um, you know, spew all this false shit. And uh, for what, you know, for fame mm-hmm. and fortune, that's finite and they can't take it with them mm-hmm. when they die because you never see a U-Haul following a hearse. All right, hey, I'm done. Hey, Corey. You know what? You, Damn. You know, spe- spe- so about the dual that- sense. <laughs> <laughs> hey Corey. I'm sorry. Speaking I of things that Corey just said, I just was looking at a really, really funny old stupid fucking RP joke from uh, Tom. Go on, talk amongst yourself. Nice. S- speaking of uh, things that uh that can piss you off, uh, Nexus, how's Demon Souls oh. going? Okay. So I how do you like that segue? I'm I'm trying to get I'm it better, Corey. To <laughs> steal a bit from a a reviewer I really respect, named Tim Rogers and Action Button dot net. He always starts all of his reviews with the bottom line, right? Let me summarize because I'm going to ramble a lot. Let me summarize my thoughts in like a quick sentence and like a score. Overall, I really like the Demon Souls remake. Bottom line, it is like a perfect version of something that you love that exists in your head and now it's real. But for some reason, Rob Schneider is there and you can't quite figure out Oh no! He's there. No! So, <laughs> Uh, hopefully by the end of me talking about demon souls you'll kind of understand where i'm coming from with that uh i do have a question before we start i wait i'm looking at i'm looking at this thing that blaine posted in here and the one of the usernames i just have to give credit for this uh the username is bukake hokage (laughs) that's pretty good That Uh, that is a vintage fucking meme is what that is. But yes, I do have one question, Nexus, if you don't mind. Yeah. So what I remember of the Souls games is the character creators are fucking Garbo. Yes. Ooh. And the beautiful humans that I'm seeing people. So make, the Demon Souls remake. Look so weird and ultimately, Souls. like a lot of the NPCs too, all look really cool. And, and also the, the weird faces they're taking selfies like, with. Like what the fuck? Despite the fact that you can make a really good looking character. You can still make like a freak too. You can have like a like a weird deformed face with like of like the eyes like bigger than like the mouth if you want to. But you can make an actual realistic looking character. It's really, okay. really awesome, overwhelmingly good character creator. Because I like I am oh, I'm also yeah. people see oh sorry. I'm like also seeing people take like selfies in the game. You can make a character yeah. make- there's a really good photo mode. It's so weird to me. Like, this doesn't look like Demon yeah. Souls to me. It's when was imagine how trippy it is for me. I played this game in 2010. This is this is this is basically um when you put in photo mode in a game, it's sort of like uh imagine imagine you are a knight uh trying to save your realm, but it's the year 2020 and you can share all your experiences yeah. on social media. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nexus, when was the last time you played the original? So the last time I played the original was about two years ago. And I've played the original 
I want to say like from memory, probably eight times. And I've, I mean, beaten it eight times. I've played it a lot. Uh, honestly, Demon Souls, probably one of my favorite games ever. I think ultimately it's, I think one of the most influential games made ever. Uh, and like Nexus is the, the Nexus and Demon Souls is the reason I have this username. It's, uh, I love Demon Souls. One That's of my favorite awesome. games ever. Mm, that's really cool yeah. i actually i have a i have an origin story with demon souls yeah. as well um but mine is not as cheery uh <laughs> so when demon well, souls from fortune so, <laughs> so when oh, demon no. souls first came out for the playstation 3 um i had seen the the, the trailers for it everything mm. like that it was like um you know, be prepared to die. Basically, yeah. it was like the tagline. And I was like, okay, cool. This game is gonna be unnaturally hard. I like challenges. I, I I'm I'm down. Let's see what yeah. this game's all about. I still by even saying that, I was not ready for the oh, kind yeah. of challenge that this game it was rough displayed. The first time it was so rough. And honestly, it, it sucks to say this, but I played it, I I beat the first boss, which is the the phalanx or whatever the, or yeah, phalanx. the phalanx and uh and then i i returned it yeah because i just couldn't it's, do it it's I, definitely I, uh, rough. yeah i'm um, like mechanically how does it compare to the original because obviously you know the original has a bit of uh i don't want to say jank but it's a little rough around the edges uh i believe they added omnidirectional rolling now at the least yes. right uh yes, all the yeah. a lot of the animations are new too oh awesome are you mm -hmm. have you been playing in cinematic or uh performance uh, I've been playing in the performance mode because uh, from what I could tell, there wasn't too big a difference with the cinematic mode. And I just mm. prefer to have the 60. I was watching a, um, I, th I think it was a Digital Foundry video where yeah, they were the interviewing some of the, some of the uh, Blue Points uh, developers. They said like, yeah, no, uh, basically cinematic and performance look ex nearly exactly the same. Yeah. So it's like there's probably no reason not, not to play in performance. Picking, uh, performance. Uh, yeah. I've also been playing, because uh, the game has a lot of filters, kind of similar to how Shadow of the Colossus did it. Uh, I've been playing with a classic filter, so it looks a lot more like the PS3 game, which is really cool. Nice. Uh, that it just, like, all the color grading is the same. It still has the kind of, like, blue hue, stuff like that. It's really, really awesome. If you had um, to pinpoint uh, some of your uh, criticisms, what, what would some of the so, specifics be? Uh, I want The, the to Rob Schneiders, if you way. will. I, I have a lot of complaints, but I want to say, like, a lot of them are smaller nitpicks that I only really have because it's one of my favorite games ever. And ultimately, I don't think any of these affect how I feel about it because I do think I do think Demon's Souls for PS5 is, like, awesome. Uh, I just have some minor issues. Uh, when Bluepoint made Shadow of the Colossus, a lot of people's biggest complaint was that a lot of the atmosphere of Shadow of the Colossus was kind of lost in the remake. And I think Demon Souls kind of suffers from the same problem to a much heavier degree. Uh, a lot of the aesthetic and atmosphere of the game has kind of changed in ways that ultimately, I think, make it very different from the original PS3 version. Uh, in particular, a lot of the enemy and boss designs are changes. Uh, and I think mostly they're fine. There's a couple standout ones. So like the Adjudicator was this big, like, big like blob monster and he had these cool like intricate tattoos he almost looked like something that people would go to like worship or something and in the remake he's kind of just a big gross like blob monster covered in like dirt and blood and stuff it feels weird that they would take like those um those creative liberties with it yeah. because it, it's, it's like such a wild deviation like There's... i can see like minor touch-ups or like yeah. but it just seems one. wild I did see one really good point about that, which is that while these legit, while these complaints are legitimate, um, I mean, like I, I kind of scoffed at the initial things of like, oh, Tower Knight looks fucked mm -hmm. up and Voletary should. Oh yeah, be I think Tower Knight right. looks great actually. Because all that seemed so like, well, no, that was because it ran like shit on the PS3 and yeah. the lighting did not exist in that sense. But, but then when I saw things like, um, I forget his name, but he's the dude that shows up. Before you fight Tower Knight, you brought this up next. Yes, the the, the fat officials, which have fat an official. unfortunate name. Yeah, they, they took away the mask and just they yes. actually made it. Uh, it's made actually it not a mask. Just... It's their face. That's just what they look like. Okay, so then so then they fucked up and like instead of having them be like this like kind of fat character but also with like yeah. a cool face, now they're just the evil fat character. So the fat officials originally look like these like big kind of pompous like 
bourgeoisie dickheads, right? But they're possessed by a demon, and now their skin is all gray. They have this disgusting smile on their face, and they like they laugh at you and throw fire and stuff. Uh, honestly, the ones in the original Demon Souls still freak me out. They're so scary. And in the remake, they kind of lose a sense of dignity almost. Now their t- their clothes are torn up. They have this big exposed like belly with all these like warts and and growths on it. They look a lot more like a boomer from Left 4 Dead, uh, from like mm-hmm. Left 4 Dead. Uh, they, have, they don't smile as often. They do still smile and they do still laugh, but they almost sound like like they're like about to cough out a lung when they do it. It's not quite as intimidating. And again, like that kind of atmosphere from the original is kind of lost, especially with stuff like the fat officials. I, I saw uh, some of the images that you're putting out there, and it's uh, yeah, it's definitely a bit of a change. Yeah. Big and I'm sorry, I, I can't I can't hear the word like a comparison in a boomer without thinking of my uh, Krillin mod, where yeah. he just blows up. Yeah, <laughs> I think I I think oh. I get what um what Nexus is is talking about in the sense that it's the PS3 version. It it, yeah. it created more of this haunting environment that you got this feeling very that gothic, de- yeah, very gothic, and that demons were really just like scavenging this land. Yeah. Whereas uh, the new remake feels more along the lines of like um. I don't know, like just medieval fantasy. Yeah, like desolate, just just yeah. sad and desolate. Like it's yeah. not. What I was gonna yeah. say before was, um, mm-hmm. like you know these com- these complaints come up and they're legitimate, but I saw someone make a really good point that you know, just because I mean, gr- granted, whoever said that comment about the um, oh dude, being faithful, that's why the difficulty's not there, yada yada. Like that was stupid bullshit. But that person's an idiot. But uh, I'm actually wait, gonna get back to that later. Yeah, you know, I I I know you are. That's why I brought yeah. it up. But um, like. But something I thought someone pointed out that was really interesting, I'm sorry I keep coming around this, is that um, when you're an artist on this game and mm-hmm. you want to do right by it, if some executive from whatever fucking company is is putting the money behind it goes, you got to make that a fat character with warts and take yeah. away the mask because that's what's going to sell. You yeah. can't go, no, because that yeah. person's going to tell you, get the fuck out, you, you do it, until yeah. they get to the person who does it. Right. Mm-hmm. Sadly, that's kind of what happens in in higher up games. And all the the other complaint that I've seen in in um in reference to people's criticisms is like um people are saying like oh well you know the PS3 was limited and that's true it was it, there's a lot of limitations with the PS3 I'm going to talk about the music later and that's another issue but one of the things that I think make Demon Souls so special is that the developers of the game with a limited budget and with limited hardware so it's early PS3 game. They've made something that works within the restrictions that they had that was still really special. And they created a unique atmosphere with that. That is kind of lost in the remake. And I I want to say, you know, the enemy design, enemy redesigns and boss redesigns. So there's also some armor redesigns, too. I don't think they're really that big a deal. They don't really impact the aesthetic that much and the atmosphere that much. But the big one that I think is an actual problem with the game is the soundtrack. The new soundtrack is not very good. Uh, a lot of the original soundtrack is very subdued, very quiet, kind of gives you this feeling of helplessness in a lot of uh, a lot of situations. In other situations, it almost feels like the music is making fun of you and laughing at you. Uh, it gives you this feeling of like there's a dying animal in front of you and you're putting it out of its misery. Or maybe, you know... Uh, the flame lurker theme so it sounds like something you'd hear in a funeral, right? Because it's going to kill you a lot. You're, it's your funeral, you know? Uh, and the the remake lacks a lot of the, like, loud trumpets and loud percussions. And instead has a lot of, like, loud violin and choir, which makes it sound a bit more generic, a lot more like Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne. It kind of lacks the uniqueness of the original soundtrack and said just kind of blends together. I did an experiment where I listened to the original soundtrack and obviously I'm a lot more familiar with it. So I picked out, you know, different boss themes that, uh, that, uh, you know, the songs are associated to. And then I listened to the remake soundtrack. I played it on shuffle to make sure that, uh, you know, I wasn't cheating by having it lined up correctly, but I could barely identify some of the soundtracks to the bosses anymore because they sound so different. They're almost completely different songs. It's like if you were playing a Halo remake, right? And you're you're getting into the Warthog, you're about to do the Warthog run. It's so exciting, right? Music starts playing, and then you hear like Ed Sheeran 
And he's like, oh, we're good one. Like the water is. Oh my god. And you're like, well, what the what the fuck? Why is that Sharon here? It's this just such a warthog a... run. And it's listed as the warthog run. And the developers are like, oh yeah, you know, this is the warthog run song now. We reimagined it. But it doesn't it isn't it, it just doesn't convey it, it doesn't convey yeah. the same uh, emotion or feeling. It's just like Exactly. Um, and I think I, I actually would answer that. Uh, and this is this is not an excuse or anything. It's just more of an agree- uh, agreement, um, yeah. uh, just explanation of it. But rather, I think when they ultimately when they remade Demon Souls, they are essentially trying to appeal mm-hmm. to a more broader audience um, with with making it feel and look more generic. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately. On a fiscal scale, I guess that might work. I mean, I don't know because I, I feel like there were a lot of people that really did like the original Demon Souls the way yeah. it was, um, and we're just hoping for the exact same yeah. experience just with updated graphics. And, and I'm fine with changes. Ultimately, I think mm-hmm. a lot of the changes are really dope. But I okay, the so, music stuff in particular, it makes me sad that people that are so, new to Demon Souls aren't going to be able to experience that same atmosphere. I, I actually went ahead and I went on IMDb to try to find mm-hmm. who did the OST for the new one. Uh, I'm not finding like an actual composer, but the score mixer behind this one did Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us Part mm. Two, Death Death Stranding, the the Modern Warfare remake from last year, uh, stuff stuff like that. Does it sort of? I don't know if you played any. any uh, I, I played a fair few of those. I Does wouldn't that, say it. I Does wouldn't it, like, say it sounds like those. Device? No. It, okay. it's, in the it case of Modern Warfare, like, like, that, that's... Dark a, Souls 3, if I had to yeah. compare it. In the, yeah. in the case of uh, Modern Warfare, that's basically just a full-on reboot slash prequel. I'm looking a for requel. the closer right now. Yeah. Um, so well, yeah, it's the original Modern Souls game, game so... Uh, I'll bring up... I think the biggest offender to the change in music is there's a song... Uh, that plays and i'm not gonna spoil it because i know people are gonna experience demon souls for the first time but if you're familiar demon souls the boss the final boss of the fifth world the one that's at the bottom of the swamp you'll probably know what i'm talking about at this point uh that's the theme abandoned by god and it's the original is this solo organ with like some light violin in the background it's sad gives you a sense of dread you're this is a fight where you're not the hero you're doing something awful and in the remake it almost sounds like bombastic and like epic it gives you this feeling of like like you're like you're doing something you're you're the you're the hero in this situation but like I think- when you compare it to what you're doing in the fight like you're doing something horrible in the fight it, and it it just gives you this totally different feeling from the music um, I, I want to have a question just because I want to see if this is the same thing I had seen. Uh, does the does the does the phrase "birds for scale" have a relevance to this boss? Uh, no, no. Okay. I'm talking well, about uh, there's two people in a swamp that just want to be left alone, and you have to go kill them. So okay. in the uh, right, yes, that. yes, I remember them. Yeah. I'm so in relation to the uh, boss with a similar issue from what I've heard. Yeah. That they in relation to. Music. Sorry, go on. <laughs> In relation to the uh, bird issue, is there no uh, cause for concern? Oh, oh my God. I think I'm not sorry. That I'm one didn't sound <laughs> too concert, bad. But again, like, sorry, ultimately sorry. kind of doesn't stand out as much. Mm. So I actually found the guy who composed mm. it. His name is Bill Hems- Hems- mm-hmm. Hemsipat. Uh, His address is. <laughs> <laughs> His area code uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, he, did, he did the Ghost of Tsushima DLC, mm. and he was the he was the music editor on a bunch of stuff: God of War, Death Stranding, Voltron, Legendary Defenders. So I think I could maybe compare it to the God of War soundtrack to an extent. I think okay. God of War still um, because I forget the name of the composer, but he does an awesome job making fair, it very. Fair. Unique fair, themes fair. for the game that that go throughout the whole whole game. It, it is it's uh, bear 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 yeah. McCreary. Uh, yeah, yeah, bear something. Bear, well, bear bear McCreary also did yes, the bear McCreary. Bear McCreary uh, fun fact, uh, real quick, also did the music for um, Outlander, the show. I uh, think um, I yeah. think just to put a bow on it, just because we could. 
Yeah, I think just to put a bow on it, just because we can absolutely do a whole yeah. podcast specifically about Demon Souls, and just because I know a Blaine wants to talk about Yakuza Seven. Uh, can I say oh, also one yeah. final thing? Oh, can yeah, I say just I have one one final thing as well? Yeah, yeah I, go ahead. I, so I was just gonna say that um, in comparison with the two soundtracks, from what I'm understanding, is that. Um, it seems like when they made the soundtracks uh, for the for the original, it they obviously ha- took the story and the characters into account. Yeah. Whereas when they made the remake, they were just like, "Oh no, it's a remake of Demon yeah. Souls, our original title. We got to make it epic and 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 yeah. powerful." And it, you know, they totally threw the whole semblance of the story out the window. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you had that, a, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And again, like to go back to Shadow of the Colossus, there's. It's a good remake, but there's a sense of nuance, contracted, contrastic imagery that's lost, right? If there's an enemy, then that's an enemy. They can't be tragic. They can't be scary. Uh, they or say they can't be scary. They have to be gross and they have to or they have to be like badass, right? They can't be they can't be as interesting as they were in the original. And I think that one of the biggest issues that I have with some of the and I obviously you guys talked about this a lot a couple episodes ago, but they made this big deal about we don't want to change the original vision of Demon Souls, so we're not going to be adding easy mode or accessibility options, anything like that, right? Which That's is horseshit. Keep it as close to the original, mm. and yet there's all of these changes to enemies, armor design. Some of the armor is completely different. Uh, some of the the music is completely different. So that excuse of we don't want to change the original vision by adding easy mode. I'm sorry, but it's mm-hmm. bullshit. It's complete. It's absolute totally fucking bullshit. That makes sorry. Sense. Yes, it is completely bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> it's also, it's why I doubt. I mean, the excuse I said before where, Hey, if a higher up tells you do X, you have to do X. Yeah. If the director of this game is going like, uh, or whoever it was, I don't remember off the top of my head. Was it, was it the director? Uh, I, yes. I believe it was. Yeah, it was one of the directors. Well, well sometimes even the director has to, director. to Sometimes even the, the director has to capitulate to higher up producers yeah, that's and whatnot. True. No, that's 100% you just got to listen to the IP holder to, uh, you know, whatever. No, absolutely. Well, and it just point... makes me less willing to believe that was the way it was across the board if they're making such a big deal out of, unless, again, it's literally just to appease to the lowest common denominator you know, of the Souls board if, community. If I had to throw mm-hmm. out a guess, I bet they had trouble making it and just wanted to throw out an excuse. Because one mm-hmm. of the things they did was oh, they probably. took the original AI from the original Demon Souls and just put it into the game again. So the AI for the enemies is the same AI as the original Demon Souls. Which means they do a lot of the same stupid shit. Which is really funny. So <laughs> uh, I imagine maybe they just had trouble with like 2010 AI code and couldn't figure it out or something like that. Can I? So quick uh, elevator pitch summary. What, what would you say your quick thoughts on it are? Uh, for Demon Souls, again, like ultimately, awesome game, awesome remake of a of a classic game. I didn't even talk about all the things that like I have a bunch of notes about stuff I like, but we're gonna have know, to have you on again. Go on we're we're going to have a specific yeah. podcast for this. So much stuff about stuff I like, but ultimately, there's some changes in the atmosphere that affect the game to an extent. But it's still a great remake. I still think people should really play it. It's it's awesome. It's really really dope. Awesome. Thank you, Nexus. Blaine, I have, the floor is yours. Well, see, you're going to be mad at me because I actually was delaying my own talk a little bit to make to make a comment relevant to what Nexus was saying. Mm. Uh, with everything you've said about this, about this game tonight, has actually makes me think about how, like, every time people say, like, we want a real remake of Silent Hill 1, or we want <laughs> yeah. a, a better HD remake of, like, 2 or 3. And when you made the comment you did about how... Um, FromSoft was working within their limitations, and that's part of why you see you have this, like, striking product. It's kind of why, like, whenever I hear people say things like that, I'm just kind of like, maybe... I mean, if if the hypothetical Schrodinger's Silent Hill soft reboot actually does happen, I'm not going to say no to it. I still don't believe it's going to happen, but I'm not going to say no to it. But I feel like when people say, I want, like, another remake that wasn't Shattered Memories and stuff like that, you're not going to be... You're still not going to get... You're not going to get that the one... uh, the one visual director who yeah. literally had to lock higher ups out of his office and, and hold the CG cutscenes oh, yeah. hostage in order to get the game the way they wanted it to be. Like and, you're not going to get that in a remake of Silent Hill one. And you don't get that from blue point having whatever options they did to do what they were going to do. 
and also with the whole Silent Hill one thing and the whole based on limit limitations, that's where the fog comes from. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like if they're fog if they're is so iconic. That, it's because yeah, of the limitations. I feel like if I feel mm-hmm. like they if they same try to redo Souls, that, actually. like if they try to redo that, it's just not gonna hit the same. Yeah. So it's like I'm 100 percent behind you, Blaine. Like 100 percent behind yeah. you. Like from um, don't say we need remakes of stuff. We don't need remakes the, of everything. The argument for remakes versus ports. I'm always always in the side of ports, just from the preservation standpoint. Oh like, yeah, 100 percent. You know, I think people should be able to experience the original Demon Souls and the original atmosphere. I love that they just poured it on the PS5. I think it'd be dope. For they what have, it's I, worth, it's I believe digital it... on PS3. I'm sure it wouldn't be that I, hard. I, I believe um, in that Blue Point interview that uh, Digital Foundry did. They said that the, these two mm-hmm. engines are running concurrently, so oh, yeah. they technically Absolutely. have Demon Souls running uh, on the can, PS5. There's a new camera. You can actually switch it to the old shitty janky camera if you want. I mean, I've, hey, I've played a lot of Demon Souls. I don't want to fucking play with that camera ever again. <laughs> Fuck that. Until you load up the game, the original game, in like a year after you played the shit out of the remake. Yeah, maybe. All right, Blaine. <laughs> Yaki's All right, so, so, welcome I to I hate my being party. the bad guy for what it's worth. No, oh, it's yeah. Don't worry about it. I, I'm, in, I'm in charge of this podcast now from here to the end, I guess. <laughs> so, I said most of the, what I wanted to say, to be honest. The unofficial fifth member has taken over. Oh, yeah. It's a coup. So, mm. I How have been Ichiban? playing... Ichiban is a snack. I <laughs> Hell yeah. And incredibly relatable. So listen, so I've been playing a few games lately. I was like playing the the I told some people my story about how I actually got a free download of Bayonetta, even though I bought a used copy of Bayonetta 2. That was fucking crazy. Um I was pl- I've been playing that on and off. I've been playing Octopath Traveler. I really enjoy that. It's a, one of the best RPGs I've played. I love that game so freaking much. It's so good. Yeah. Um, I remake really. six in Octopath's engine and I'll die happy. Bro, um, remake five first. <laughs> remake five first. It needs. Yes, yeah, no. Five needs a remake. Five it's not as good, good but it six. needs a remake. It deserves. Oh, it. it's way better. We can have, we can have that discussion later because I love five. It was my favorite for the longest time. Um, but I'm getting sidetracked. Yeah, but then. I, while I was playing all these games about a week or two ago, I was like, man, I really should pre-order Yakuza 7 because, I mean, I, I need to. It's it's a new start to the series. I didn't know if I wanted to play it immediately because I just, I have like three, four, five in the Yakuza collection. I don't have six, but I know I have to play that. But I was talking to my boyfriend and I was like, should I just play it? And he was like, just fucking play it. It's like they, they want you to do a whole new start to the series. So I yeah, for what it. it's worth, I'm in the same camp, and I'm too stubborn to to jump into seven. I I have to beat six. I I can't I'm do it. Playing zero right now. I, I stream play. it every once in a while. I've been off the boat for a little bit, but uh, uh, oh nice. I'll get back to it I'm also I'm playing zero. With, uh, some fourteen stuff. Zero is great, and I'm glad y'all are <laughs> playing it because that's gonna be a portion I get into way later when I when someone the question comes up of well where should I start? What is the definitive answer? I Fucking, just I just have to become the karaoke king. It, it's we, not an option. We need John to keep playing. <laughs> this has karaoke too. John is playing seven, so I'm happy. Exactly. Um, he stopped playing zero. He needs to at least finish zero. He does need to finish zero at some point. But anyway, so I got it on, you know, I got it like 9 p.m. on launch day. I put it in, I started playing it. And I was just, I already was excited for it. I was down for it's a JRPG because he loves Dragon Quest and everything like that. I can't fucking describe how instantly I not only clicked with this game, but the fact that, like, this is not just, oh, it's a great Yakuza game and it happens. This is this is already my game of the year. I've decided. I haven't beaten it yet. This is my game of the fucking year. I, I it was maybe going to be Resident Evil 3. Maybe, um, I forget what the fuck ever. I had something else as a contender. But no, this fucking takes the cake. It is... Not only a great Yakuza game, not only a great uh, Yakuza game, it, it's it's also one of the best RPGs I have played in fucking years. Can you touch more on uh, the RPG aspect? Because up until now, Yakuza has exclusively been like a beat 'em up. I, and uh, that the, to I, another RPG, like what would you compare it to? Um, I've seen some people compare it to Persona Five. I can't make that comparison only because I haven't played it. And I will say, as far as visual flair. I would agree somewhat with that thing because it's a whole like you know a uh, triangle X square yeah, it spells circle. Spells out Sega. I saw that. It's really cool. Do, do but, they see you coming? I don't know. Oh, but um, thank you, Sarah. 
<laughs> but actually, what I would compare it to is it makes me think more of, and because of the fact that it wants to be, you know, an homage to Dragon Quest in that sense, because main character, I'll, I'll get into that in a second. Like, it actually reminds me of the older, older of old school RPGs, like Super Mario RPG specifically, mm. really comes to mind. All because right. when you play in the battles, it's like I said, triangle is your skills, X is your attack, circle is your guard, <laughs> square is your items and other uh, uh, miscellaneous things. And it totally reminds me of the Super Nintendo uh, Super Mario okay. RPG controls. Um, I think the I'm RPG getting... aspect is probably my is probably the biggest appeal to me because I kind of tolerate Yakuza gameplay. I'm in it for like the quirkiness and the story. Mm-hmm. So to actually have Yakuza game where the mm-hmm. gameplay is like one of the biggest appeals, I'm like... That that sounds like the perfect video game in the world. Yeah. I mean, I, I that's one of my favorite things about this is the fact that because it's a new style of gameplay, because it's a new main character, because it's also just it. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm the uh, the biggest expert in Yakuza. I play I played one a bit when it came out originally. I've beaten Zero Kiwami. I've beaten the original uh, release of Three when they did that you whole Brave Soul. Yes, I I actually and three was my favorite for a while. Before, well, I, played I only the, played. What's up? The remaster is okay, but jumping from Kiwami two to three is rough. I mean, for me, the jump because I started playing Kiwami two, jumping from Kiwami one to Kiwami two felt a little bit rough. Just in like, oh, these menus and UI looks like not oh yeah the same. But um, but seven is just it is so polished. It looks so good. It is, and I haven't even gotten into the meat of this discussion. I'm just all hype right now. I'm gonna fucking take my glasses off. They're not staying on my face. Oh shit! So, so glass, glass anime, glass anime, anime villain arc. I, I, so I need to, mm. I need to bring it. So like, I, I, I'm gonna explain this as if I'm gonna imagine none of you have played a Yakuza game, and I'm pitching this to you based on that. So the game does a thing which, okay, this is gonna sound stupid since of what I literally just said, but the game starts the way. Um, Yakuza 1 did, where it kind of <laughs> takes its time to establish the main character to you. You start with Ichi, Ichiban Kasuga in two, the year, the turn, of the, cent, the turn of the century, after the turn of the millennium. It's December, New Year's Eve of 2000. And you just get to, you get, you get introduced to him and how he's like, you know, he's a man of wanting to do the right thing and protect those he cares about but also is in the Yakuza, so he's expected to do things like debt collection and 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 take and shit like that. But he's faced with problems like, oh, the deck he has to collect is someone he knew from middle school that he knows is and, and I will say uh, just a heads up, I'm not the, the only spoilers that we can talk about is I'm gonna be talking game mechanics and I'm gonna be talking the early, early game and just some general some story things that I think need to be discussed. It's not gonna be like oh character deaths or anything like that. Um, From uh, what I've seen, um, Ichiban's pretty much diametrically opposed to Kiryu on that he's not cool and collected. Like he's a little bit of a loser, and like even his color scheme is completely the opposite of Kiryu's uh, white and then um, his white vest and then or his, no, his white jacket and then his red vest. And he's just the inverse of that, right? And it's it's funny because you would think that on an, on an, the initially, and it is intended that they are very different uh, outwardly projecting characters. Their, their backstories and their core, like wh- what makes them who they are characters are actually very similar. They're both incredibly grounded in there. That cat is so cute. Both those cats are so cute. <laughs> oh my God, look at them. They're both <laughs> incredibly grounded in a, a, a strong moral and ethical um, sense of duty and right and wrong. They will not. They are not willing to sacrifice innocent people or or do the wrong thing if it's not. They would rather do the right thing. The main difference between them, if I had to really just get into it, aside from their outfits, is that while Kiryu is the is the strong, stoic, silent type, and will actively kind of, you know, he'll really only let loose when he has to. Ichiban is just that boy is dumb as a bag of hammers. He does not stop talking. He will not stop talking. I adore him. Um, he think he st- acts before he speaks constantly, but he also is way more clever than people would assume. So, like, you'll get in situations like where, me, like, I can relate. exactly. <laughs> That's why I relate to him. And, and he, he gets in these situations where, like, you know, 
the pe- person they have to collect the debt from, he realizes is someone he knew from middle school. So he beats the, he does beat him down because he has to collect his wallet. And then he goes, opens the wallet and dumps it out. And his cohort's like, what are you doing? He's like, hey, the boss said he wanted his wallet. That's what I'm giving him, his wallet. And then he talks to his friend about like, you know, this guy's not working on New Year's Eve because he wants to. He's working because he has to, he's planning on paying back the money. His mother's in the hospital and you learn all these other things and you get a feel for like Ichiban is that one of that, those soft good boys on the inside, even if he's a loudmouth dumbass most of the time. Um, you, you, you learn that he was, you know, he was abandoned when he was a baby. Uh, his mother was a sex worker in a soap land, which if you're not aware of what a soap land is, viewers at home, the basic idea is it's, it is a legal, uh, it is a legal bathhouse where sex acts are performed. Pretty much imagine anything but actual intercourse is, is allowed more or less. And Blaine, what, what is sex? Yeah, what's we'll that? See, when, wow. when when two people really love what, each other, what is they a make Faku? a mistake. Um, <laughs> they make I'm a ignoring mistake. that second one. <laughs> but yeah, so wow. well, so he and 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 he he was he was abandoned in this bathhouse in this in this in this soap land and was raised by the owner as his father and by the sex workers there as as his, as his words. The the community actually raised him as well. You know, they stood by him and. What I think is so interesting about this is that at first you get into this and you're thinking, this is just your typical, for people who have played Yakuza, it's your typical wacky, like, oh, we're going to meld serious with wacky stuff and it's going to be all laughs and stuff. But then you go from Ichiban's backstory of, oh, he grew up uh, in a soap land and was around sex workers pretty much his whole young and, and adolescent life going into when you're when you're left for dead by the yakuza that you thought were going to have your back after being in jail for like 18 years this is all early game um you end up actually the one of the first things you do when you're trying to find work and you're butting up with the homeless people homeless man that has saved your life more or less you actually get a job protecting a uh a, you get a job you get a job cleaning a restaurant that in reality is a brothel where they I know I, do- I consistently forget this but uh this is the first yakuza game i believe to have uh english voice acting have you been playing oh, uh sub or dub oh, second yeah. i was actually really second. curious about that english voice acting Which, oh you know what you're right into it uh the mark hamill mark, mark hamill voice module. Yeah, I, I think judgment has a uh, english dub too right and that's you know what i like, think you're right in the, in the um that's considered like a yours is just wrong movie. jose what Damn! Was that? Damn. <laughs> Mesa, I, 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 I had the target hook up. You're supposed to be in my corner. Yeah. <laughs> you have a PS5 because of me. You can't oh, buy friendship, that Jose. Actually, that was actually a question I had for you. Have you played it with the Eng- yeah, English? I have not. Curious. I have okay. not. Um, heard a lot I of know... really positive things about it. Darren from so. SDGC was playing on it. From what I heard, it was it was really well made. Plus, um, I know that Matthew Mercer plays a very—I yeah. don't want to say the—I I, I don't want to say the character because I guess it's a spoiler. But Matthew Mercer plays a returning character, and I want to yeah. know how he did. I, as think, I don't think it's a spoiler, but I'm not going to say it. I think for me, so much yeah. of the charm of the Yakuza series is how specifically Japanese-centric yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. So to play well, it in English kind of dilutes that. Yeah, that's how I feel. Um, I mean, I'm not going to throw shade on anybody who does want to play with the English dub. It's a phenomenal English dub from what I've seen. My biggest issue is, um, I mean, I, I have issues with the fact that George Takei plays a main character. I know he the, the allegations against him seem murky, but I'm going to be real. I just, out of the things I, when I did research on that, he just seems like a gross old man, whether he did what he was accused of or not. So I just don't care for okay. him. <laughs> but, um, but like. Pull when, a judgment and fucking recast them in the game. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. Or or um, Yakuza Four. This is oh true. my god! Yeah. The new remastered, uh, not Shinado. What's his name? It's the dude who's a young cop or whatever, right? Yeah. It's that's so stupid. Well, he was. his name. That is a whole other. That is a whole other show too. Ta- Tony Mora was his name. About the weird double standard of that with Japanese um, blacklisting of actors, but. Um, I, I know you want to talk about certain things. It's just the the reason I'm still focusing on the one thing is because it's all going to come together. So, like, you do the mission where you're cleaning out a brothel, and Ew. while playing, you're cleaning, <laughs> no. you, 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 your characters are doing it. It's a cutscene, and and all of a sudden, these these group called Bleach Japan are 
are walking down the street and they're marching against, you know, they want to get rid of all the sex work and all the everything else, whether it's all the gray areas, they want to bleach it white. And the guy gets into an argument with the woman who hired you about why sex work is wrong and these prostitutes are being, are doing all these terrible things. And she says, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. These women are working their asses off because they have, they want to support themselves. They, some of them even have children. They're trying to survive. Like, you don't, you don't get it, Mr. Sizman with a megaphone. And then he just goes, <laughs> like oh did you hear that they they're raising children who what kind of kid would be want to be the child of a prostitute that would be so terrible and after while this argument is going on ichiban is on the second floor is holding and says he screams at the top of his lungs i never minded it while he's holding a garbage can full of cum tissues or whatever <laughs> to cum tissues. and he goes like this and the guy down there is like, is, is is that what I think it is? And he leans back to just dump it, and they all scatter like cockroaches. And the reason that I talk about this this big event is because that was the moment I realized that, holy shit, Yakuza 7 just said sex workers' rights, but also the fact that it was actually tying Ichiban's history into something to subvert a very damaging trope, which is the whole the poor sex worker or the poor child mm-hmm. sex worker and all that <laughs> weird baggage. It's the same thing. It's the same argument that's like, oh, gay people won't raise, you know, uh, straight children or whatever. They'll exactly. they'll indoctrinate them to yeah. be gay. I'm like, uh, yeah. I was raised Not by straight. Pa- I was raised by straight. Uh, bleh, I was raised by straight parents, and I turned out gay as fuck. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, th- I think uh, Derek from SGGC was was pointing out that um, a lot of the characters that wind up in your party they they're from these kinds of backgrounds, or you know, the mm-hmm. people f- from uh, lower socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, and I think that's one- absolutely commendable. It's given a voice to those, but at the same time, I kind of look back at something like. I, the entire series kind of does it, but Yakuza 2 in particular has a lot of xenophobia going on. The, yeah. Two is really bad with two. it. It's, so, yeah. It's it's all about like the Chinese foreigners invading and uh, polluting our country. It, it's, it's a bit bad. Oh, that does sound bad. I will say this one is more there's three crime families that rule the area they're in yokohama which is there's a korean crime family there's which is less organized there's the chinese mafia and then there's a a a local yakuza family so it doesn't seem more like oh all these motherfuckers are invading it's more like these three families have a stranglehold on this area and nobody wants to do anything because something could set off a powder keg Um, is the same game that has like a chicken as a mayor by the way like Yakuza Zero has a chicken that you can put into pro- property management, if that's what you're thinking. Wait, okay. you can put what? what? Yeah, about the chicken. I didn't know you could put it, the chicken in that position. The chicken is an advisor to get you more money in the Hell property yeah. management <laughs> mini game that Kitty has. Hell yeah. yeah. To double check because I've never heard of Yakuza like discussing any any of this or like doing any of this. I oh, just, the I'm games are fun. full of this. Wacky. Oh, yeah. Here's a oh, yeah. chicken. And that's the thing. Yakuza 7 wacky. is wacky. It is very wacky. It's just that it's not the things that you would expect mm-hmm. to be just wackiness are actually like later after this, the next job you work is literally for a soap land and you're helping a man, you're helping a mm-hmm. person who seems like an asshole at first and they all call him on it, but then you realize that while he was being an asshole, he actually genuinely cares for the people that work in his place of sex work and you deal with bleach Japan again. It's a reoccurring theme, and I think that that's a really important thing to bring. But yeah. I know, because I know Jose is probably going to interrupt me if I don't get to this. I know y'all want to hear about this gameplay and how mm-hmm. why this is such a great RPG. So, how many people here? I mean, Nexus is going to say yes. How many people here have played Final Fantasy V or yeah. Ten Two? Hell yeah! I played Ten Two for like a hot minute. <laughs> okay, I played the fifth. How, so uh, there you go. So get it? If the you, fifth. If you play, oh, I get it. Okay. I get it. If you've ever played a game where you switch classes, mm. this game has a literal job system. They take yeah, I the idea. About that. It it is fantastic. So, you, so by you you get you get you get jobs based on. I mean, the first one I got was um, the main character Ichiban gets the hero job after. Well, he starts off with Yakuza, which morphs into 
It's Yakuza, which morphs into our Arakawa Loyalist, which morphs into Deadbeat when he's homeless, and then which morphs into Freelancer when he's trying to get other things, which, the first thing I, the second, when I went back to it and looked at that again and saw it's a Freelancer, I was like, wait, that's kind of a reference to the, to the uh, original localization of Final Fantasy V, because you were literally called a Freelancer if you didn't select a job. And um, his first job is Hero, but the game has you go to the job center, hello work, an empl- unemployment office. And I learned recently that even though I haven't like unlocked that um, mode, I guess, or, or ability, you actually, why are you smiling? Uh, you sorry, we're, by your talk, we're listening to what you're saying, but there's, there's a chat conversation between me and Jose in the Twitch chat right now. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to look at that in a, in a, in a little bit. I can't I'll, I'll, su- right I'll summarize it for the audio and YouTube <laughs> listeners. Uh, Corey was very upset with my previous pun. He said, why? I say, why? I told him uh, he should become a pun doctor. Maybe you, you would gain some patience. And I just lost my shit. <laughs> you couldn't <laughs> stop smiling. Then I couldn't stop smiling. <laughs> I, I'm smiling under here. You can't say. Um, but yeah, no. So like, I, I'm actually really ex- I've I've seen that like when you... The, the way you develop these other jobs when I did some more research is the fact that the game also has a personality system. What the personality system is, is Ichiban will be faced with... Uh, every Yakuza game has had, like, you know, you'll have, oh, do you want to answer like an asshole? Do you want to give a serious, sincere answer? Do you want to give a wacky answer? And now it's not just do you want which dialogue tree it also goes into leveling up your personalities you'll have stats like kindness intelligence um passion and what these do is they give you buffs to defend against like certain status ailments they will um they will affect i believe they also affect your relationship with your um uh relationships with your party members but i'm not 100 sure on that and they also allow you to decide whether or not you can get certain jobs down the line for Ichi. Like one is, I, from what one article I saw was that like you can get a job called host or something like that. And you have to have like a style rating of level of like five or more or something like that to get it. And this is all just based on either responding to ways, certain things, certain ways in conversations, or also you can go to, a voc- there is a vocational school in the game, which costs a bit like t- at least I think minimum of like 50,000 yen per class some of them are thirty thousand, but you take a test and then you will get massive upgrades to your um, personality limit based on that and it all ties back into the way the fucking job system works. like it it blows my mind that i'm playing a yakuza game that has it's like this game was made for me because i love job systems it's my favorite mechanic of jrpgs since final fantasy 5 uh i know it started earlier than that but i don't like to talk about three because that game sucks um <laughs> oof it's, it sucks. Uh, I'm sorry. It sucks. It looks uh, really nice. aged very poor. So poorly. I mean, it looks really nice. The story is fine, but the but the fucking gameplay in that game is just dog shit. Even on the DS remake. Yeah. Um. Um. The fa- and 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 like, I, I don't know. I just. I mean, this game plays so. It's so fun to play. It's so. I'm sorry if I'm getting rambly here it's so fun to play it's so well polished um the mini games are back you have like one which is you go to a movie theater and you have to because this guy is like oh everybody comes in my theater and falls asleep and i just want to show people classic cinema and the i it becomes a not a rhythm mini game but like a they pop up and you have to push the corresponding button mini game of stopping yourself from falling asleep which is shown by these Men in suits with sh- well, pe- people with suits in, in, in suits with giant sheep heads, not anthro sheep heads, <laughs> like just straight up sheep heads, doing hand motions and creating big Z's to shoot at you and knock you out, and like and and you can also use that to like I guess gain bond points with your party, and that's that's the thing I forgot to talk about is that on top of everything else, you have a party system with your party members. Like one is the is Nanba, a homeless man who's an ex a, an ex nurse. Um, the other one right now I have is a Dachi who was fired from the, who was originally like sent to a lower position within the police force to stamping license, li- licenses because his boss didn't like him. And over the course of the events of the story, he actually loses that job as well. So you're all unemployed together and you are able to develop relationships with your party by 
by you know you can go to this bar called the survive karaoke bar and you sing karaoke. you can sing yourself and they'll cheer you on you can actually do the thing like you would be able to do in previous games multiplayer which is like you'd sing back up or cheer them on from the audience but what what this allows you to do is you can actually build more of your relationship points with them by doing this and when you unlock these things called drink links that's when you hit. Uh, that's when you've gotten your bond as far as it can go in the regular game, and you have to go back to survive to have a conversation with them. And they talk about, um, like, you know, something from their past that they are not happy about, or other things. And you grow stronger, and it allows you to go to the next level of friendship with them. How and do um? How do how do summons work? A, how does summoning work? So that's that's a good question. Um, summoning is unlocked via a sub story that is. I believe unmissable because it's it's directly in your path on the main story anyway. Um, so you you're handed a flyer that's like oh call pound mates and it, that is the name of it. It's called pound mates. It's fantastic. I think and, I saw John talking about that. Yes, you <laughs> he, did. He you gave it a John bit of a different Andrew context. Uh, maybe, maybe not. So it's it's the Adachi, the ex detective, thinks it's a you know call and have us you know get a get a the first it says the first call is free and he thinks it's for sex. So he calls and everything like that. And that's like a thing. Keep reoccurring themes of sex work in this game. I actually really love it. It's it's really good. Um, all of a sudden, Gary Buster Holmes shows up from uh, I believe it was Yakuza One was his first appearance, right? Really, I don't really recall tall. Who, I don't... I don't recall who that is. Give me a refresher. Really tall black man that uh, speaks in broken Japanese. Well, not broken Japanese, but like very clearly, I am not a person from Japan, but I have learned fluent Japanese, and he enunciates mm-hmm. very specifically. Uh, that wouldn't he was in happen. Yakuza to, one. That wouldn't happen to be the same because you can tell how bad. I mean, it's Japan, but diversity, whatever. Um, that wouldn't happen to be the same character from Yakuza Three onwards, the one that gives you revelations, right? No, 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 no. Different character, as far okay. as I know. This isn't. This is like a. This is a guy you fight in one of the in the tournament. I think that you have to take place in or whatever in one. It, it, it's been a few years since I played Kiwan. Um, but anyway, like he he shows up and he's like, oh yeah, you hired me. And the whole idea is that it's it's a service where you call someone to help you and you pay them money and they beat the living shit out of whoever is harassing you. So that's the summon system. Hmm. Is you pay money to summon someone to beat the asses of the people. Isn't there one we can summon like a horde of crawdads or something? I what? saw that in one of the trailers. I haven't unlocked that yet. I have unlocked so far, uh, but Gary Buster Holmes, who just comes down with big metal balls on his hands. If you've ever seen um, Ray Teacher on Izuka, there's a bit where he gets bowling balls super glued to his hands. Oh, hell yeah! They call what it the fuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they think he and he kind of starts pretending he's Dodaimon. This is kind of like that, except he just has big spiked balls on his fists in the summon thing. And he, Jeez. he you know, turns around. Another one is a sumo wrestler that you meet in a sub story because doing sub stories you unlock other ones, and doing the main story you unlock other pound mates. But he's a big hairy sumo wrestler that does a sumo pound on the ground and it shatters the earth. Um, I know for a fact. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say it because Sarah said it was a spoiler. Um, there's a there's I'm not gonna get it. Um. There's uh, one I unlocked that if anyone's familiar with the, I don't know if it's a mockery of ABDL, which stands for adult baby diaper lover, or if it's just like, oh, look at you mean the best, you mean the best sub story in Kiwami 2 has made its return. It always it is made of return in a big way um, <laughs> and through doing that sub story, you get the patriarch of that Yakuza family. Who, what? when you summon him, I believe he just dro- drops in the ground and lets out a wail so loud that it stuns all the enemies. And... All right, I think just because we're getting close to the end, do you have a a summary of your of your thoughts? If you had to bullet point it, if I had to bullet point it, um, we accept been... dashes <laughs> and squares. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've. I've been a fan of the Yakuza series for a while. Um, I, I, I mean, not when it first came out, but like more when Zero was really going forward in Kiwami, and I just fell right back into it after I loved Three. And a lot of people have, you know, always asked the question like, "What's the best place to start?" Should I start at Z? And for the longest time, it was just start at Zero. It's the best one. It, it starts you right at the beginning of the story, and you know they're re-releasing everything, so you can just keep going right down the line. 
Now that becomes more a question of, do you want to start Kazuma Kiryu's story and do you want to see the original Yakuza story? Or do you just want to jump in and have a fun time? And Is honestly, it necessary... Is it necessary whatsoever to play previous Yakuza games to appreciate this? I don't think so. And this is, I mean, someone has, I told you, I almost was like not ready to play Yakuza 7 because I was like, I got to beat the other ones. I am so glad I did not force myself to do that because this game stands so much on its own. Look at I, th I think if anything, I might just wait. Look at this beautiful wait. fucking steelbook. Look at this boy. Nice. <laughs> Look at this stupid, beautiful boy. I think if he has anything. no idea how dumb he is. I think if I'm anything, sorry, I might just God, wait for yeah, the Etta. Sea of craw crawdads. I would just lay mm -hmm. down in that sea. I, I, uh, I think I might just wait for the <laughs> PS5 patch to go through before I jump in. I might as well experience oh. it. With, yeah, with there's the, no reason uh, upgrades, whatever. There's no reason you don't you, you don't have to wait. Um, and I will say, like especially like you had mentioned, um, having the issue with like the fact that it was a brawler just was something that you kind of made you bounce off of it in some ways. I, I think this is such a... They clearly... I'm going to mirror something that Derek from SDGC said. Like, they clearly want this game to be a new beginning. They're calling it Like a Dragon in America. They're not calling it Yakuza 7. Um, they're stressing the English dub. They're, you know, this is a separate character. Like, I have not seen mention... I'm at least seven to nine hours into this game already. I have not seen mention of Kiryu. I have not seen mention of characters like him or Majima or the older mm -hmm. characters. Maybe uh, there's references to the Tojo clan, obviously, but like, I mean, this is the thing. The Tojo clan's not really a thing in this game. Like, you find out pretty early on that the Tojo clan is not is not what it was. And even more so than like, I haven't played 6, so I don't know if there's anything going For on. For what it's worth, I don't think that's a spoiler whatsoever because it is such a tidal weight of up and down in every single fucking game. Yeah. Let, let, let's just put it this way. The Tojo clan does not exist. The only alliance exists and in Kamurocho and that. So, like, this is honestly a great place if you've never played series, if you are not certain if you're really into brawlers, it is an incredibly engaging RPG. If you like JRPGs, I can't stress it enough, get this. Like, anybody who follows me knows I can't fucking stand Persona in general. I mean, I want to play <laughs> 1 and 2 and 3, but, like, 4 and 5 I have so many fucking problems with that I don't need to get into. This is, like, this is something I would say, if you like... If you like a modern JRPG, especially from what I've seen of things of like Persona 4, Persona 5, but you don't want to have to kind of weigh the options of do I deal with like all of this this other nastiness, or do I just deal with maybe the occasional not great, well thought out thing, but overall still like kind of a more solid product, I would push you towards this. Because this is the best modern RPG I've played in at least... I honestly can't remember the last time I had this much fun with a modern JRPG. I really like can't. Well, I think that's probably the the best thing you can say about it. Is that it's not just like, oh, I don't know, we're kind of like putting our toes in the water with the RPG. No. They actually went and made a solid RPG. This is a when they say like, oh, they want the main they they, they when they designed it like the main character loved Dragon Quest as a kid, so he views his world as a J as an RPG, and and that's like what they built the game design off of. That wasn't just a contrivance of well, we're just going to do some wacky like we'll dip in the toes and like you said, they have fully committed. This is a well-constructed RPG. I don't want them to go back to Brawlers after this. I want them to make Yakuza 8 if they make it and make it a JRPG or do other experimental things within the RPG genre. I don't want them to go back to what they did and just kind of make this like a one-off thing. All right. I think with that, I think we're going to go and wrap up the podcast. Yeah. Does anyone have any last thoughts they want to put out I there? Have, I have one last thought, even though it's not a next-gen title. Um, and Sarah will probably Kingdom want to. Kingdom of Hearts. Yeah, All right, we're gonna end oh, by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what well, no? And, Kingdom and Hearts. I haven't Sarah, gotten the new Sarah, one. Sarah, memory fucking rocks. Sarah, <laughs> is it Sarah, good? Sarah, yes. One, Hell yeah. One note. We're not gonna make this long, okay? We're both gonna say one thing, and then Jose can end it, okay? Promise. <laughs> yes, because okay. I, I have to go soon. Eddie. Anyway, I, okay. I, I work tomorrow. But. Okay. So the only thing I'm going to say is that um, for people who are new to the Kingdom Hearts series, if you like rhythm games, Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory is actually a really good spot to pick up the series because it actually walks you through uh, with Kyrie as the narrator telling you um, the story of each game. Okay. That's really interesting. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. 
Uh, the one thing I will say ab about it is, well, I sort of agree with you, Corey. I do believe if people who have played Kingdom Hearts, people who know the music of King Kingdom Hearts are going to have a better time because oh, the yeah. game doesn't outright say this, but it follows the beat of Kingdom Hearts music. So if you know the music by heart, or at least know it and know the beats, like as soon as a song starts, you're going to pick this up like that. Like you're going right. to pick it up extremely quickly because you're like, oh, I know the beats in my in my, in my head. So I, so I know how this song works. I know how the song plays. I'm going to mm -hmm. be able to get like a mm -hmm. full like... Subjectively, subjectively, it is harder for people who have not been introduced to the music of the series. Yes. There's Next part is, of me that thinks I, that's dope. <clears throat> So, so what Sorry. I'm hearing from this is this is one more reason to not play Chain of Memories on anything but the original <laughs> Game Boy Advance. Um, if I, if I guess that it takes... Chain of Memories GBA is great. Chain of Memories on the <laughs> PS2 is a nightmare. It takes the music that was remastered for the PS2. Cool. And not the Game Boy Advance, very obviously. Well, Nexus, fun. Nexus, any last thoughts that are not Kingdom Hearts related? Um, yeah. Last thoughts. You not uh, I didn't get to talk about Tekken 7 Netcode. It's really good. I played it with my Irish friend and it felt like we were next door. Um, yeah. PS5 is great. Can't wait to see what people do with new hardware, especially fighting games. I think fighting game events in general are going to be completely different when PS5 becomes the norm. And I can't wait to, for Deep Down. Yeah, with the, with the dual sense. <laughs> <laughs> With the dual sense, you can feel someone punch you in the face. All right, Blaine, last thoughts. I don't know what deep down is. Um, last I'll thoughts. use my imagination. Doesn't go to a good place. Uh, is, don't don't, don't tell me with a good time. Don't threaten me with a good time. Go get Yakuza 70 if you can afford it. If not, when it goes on sale, pick it up. You won't regret it. Um, give the Yakuza series in general a chance. It's got, Despite some shortcomings, it really has its charms. And um what's that oh yeah final fantasy 8's way better than you think it was bye <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and rem uh best for last my my target compatriot mm -hmm. uh any last words for you um yeah just simple simple uh when you leave a line you lose your pace hell yeah <laughs> boom <Exactly. laughs> mic drop <laughs> all right and with that uh right. everyone thank you for hanging out watching the podcast um thanks so much like comment subscribe on all the socials twitter twitch and on youtube all right bye-bye see you next time bye <laughs>